you're out of date. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty spinny. Yeah. Well, I think, uh, well, on that note, I think we're ready to start <laughs> the show. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, we'll yeah. just kick right in. Mm-hmm. And welcome to the Pager Train. Today, I have in the studio with me Maria Tran, uh, action superstar, um, a recent star in um, uh, Last King of the Cross, and uh, star in actor, uh, star actor, director for Echo 8. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks uh, for having me. Super impressed uh, with your work lately, and super proud as well, by the way. Aww. It's been really great to watch. Uh, I would like to just jump straight to um, Last King of the Cross yes. uh, while I can. Um, I watch that on uh, Paramount oh, yeah. every Saturday morning because uh, it got released on Fridays. That's right. I uh, watched it every Saturday morning and at around 10 o'clock on a Saturday morning, I was really annoyed. Oh. Because I'm like, I have to wait another damn week to see what happened because they only released it one episode yeah. at a time. I'm like, I want to binge this thing. So I'm going to go back and binge it and watch it again. Cool. Yeah, so... My first question about this experience that you've had, um, uh, you know, there, there was so many, there was actually other um, Western Sydney actors in there that I knew as well. Mm. And uh, my interest was, is like, uh, one of my heroes is in this, is in this series, Tim Roth. Oh, really? Okay. I love Tim oh, Roth. Tim's amazing. Um, and I just wanted to ask, what was it like working with, with Tim Roth, man? <laughs> Tim. <laughs> I have to admit, Tim is a bit of a larrikin. Mm-hmm. So I have to admit, when I first day I met him, like, it's funny because when I when I got casted for the role, like, um, my sister would really try to prep me. She's like, mm-hmm. oh, you know, you got to try to know your script inside out, no option A, B, C. And then she'll do the scenes where she'll throw shit at me mm-hmm. as well, just so that I remember my lines and I keep mm-hmm. on in character. I'm like, why would I do that? So what if Tim throws stuff at you? And then, mm-hmm. you know, on the first day, he's throwing money in my face. <laughs> in one of the scenes is one of the cuts and I had to still keep in my character. Yeah. So with Tim, he is um, sometimes unpredictable, mm-hmm. but at the same time, what he gives on camera mm. is really charismatic. Yeah. And that's something I learned. And I was quite fortunate to spend a bit of time with him just to ask him about his experience and how he chose to, you know, be in films like Planet of the Apes. I remember mm. I asked him about, that. oh, yeah, what? You, how did you get on that? And why? He's, oh, because my kids love, you know, um, mon- monkeys, you know. Yeah. And I thought if I make a film on monkeys, it'll be cute for them. I'm like, what? <laughs> like, you, you did it for that? I'm like, yeah. And he was just so, you know, just so real. And mm. he was always in the scene like he knows when you're not in the scene because i remember there was one time i wasn't oh mm. is, i mean i was but there, there's a thing with acting it's very subjective mm. right so if you're in it yeah the people looking at you yeah, it looks like you're playing the role but the for someone like tim mm-hmm. he's in it and he wants to feel that connection mm. i don't know this this crazy void that you get in and mm-hmm. it's just two characters uh, two people really mm. just trying to get what they want from each other mm. and he i feel like that's the level that he kind of wanted. So I kind of feel like I have to really, you know, amp it up yeah. uh, when I work with him. But he, he was a pleasure to work with. Yeah, wow, amazing. Mm. Um, uh, but yeah, again, an amazing series. Uh, I remember when, uh, the first glimpse of you coming into the series because it was like episode three, I think. Yeah. It was around down that, that part of the One series. One two was a glimpse, you know, yeah, yeah. see. Yeah, but yeah. then, yeah, three kicked off. Well, not to spoil it too much, you're a crime <laughs> boss in this, <laughs> yeah. in this series. Yep. Um, and as well, uh, for me, uh, the region that this is talking about, like I grew up in that, in that era, oh. um, uh, like, um, especially, um, going on a train from Campbelltown to, c- to the city, you'd go through Cabramatta mm. and there's always in your mind as well, like, cause you'd run into uh, different organizations around the traps, you know, like you know, there's the 5T gang yes. and straight up in the, in the film, uh, in, in the series, mm. you know, um, your, your brother in the, in the show yeah. got cut up by the 5T and you're like, yeah. I've heard stories like that, yeah, you know, and, yeah. and, and, and seen the repercussions of stories like that. And you, it, there was a bit of fear in the community about those sort of things. 100%. And uh, same with the, the cross, man. Like, you, it was a bit of a no-go zone because mm. you knew what went on there. Mm. It was all nefarious, all dodgy. Yeah. Um, and uh, to see that from my childhood or what I understood about that and to see that come alive and you guys bring it to life was amazing. Yeah. I mean, that, that set that they built out in Prospects. Mm. You know, like that, that the big strip. Like, did you get a chance to see it or yeah, yeah. about it? Yeah, yeah. I had um, friends that were um, building that set. and Because uh, it's out at the uh, Raging Waters. That's it. Um, a white, uh, uh, not white water rafting. What do you call it? Um, it's like the um, Wet and Wild. Yes. It used to be called Wet and Wild. Yeah. It's called Raging Waters now. Mm. Um, and you know, I drive past it every day. Mm. Uh, and, you know, I see it. I'm like, oh, it's up there. That would be so good to go up in there. Um, so I've seen a lot of photographs of it and, um, uh, I've heard a lot of people talk about it and obviously in the series, it looks amazing. It looks like you're on 
yeah, the, the strip. Yeah. Looks yeah. exactly the same. Yeah. I mean, I was on set and I was like, wow, this store is so detailed. You can see all the cakes and stuff. Are they mm. real cakes or fake cakes? But it's like, oh my gosh, it's very, mm. it feels amazing because I'm mm. like, this, they actually built a set. You know, it's not like fully CGI or, you know, they're yeah. not cheating by dressing places up. There's it's, no retrofitting. It is what it is. It is. Yeah. 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 Um, but uh, absolutely amazing. Uh, and, I think uh, there's one line that we've been quoting around the house uh, <laughs> that you say uh, yeah. in the film because uh, there's a, a, you're playing a card game because mm. you, you were a card dealer at yes, some point. Yes, a croupier. A croupier, yeah. My yeah. character, yep. And um, uh, you in the in the show, you were studying one of the high rollers. Yes. And then you go back and play them. Yes, that's right. Um, and uh, he goes to you, do I know you? Yeah, and you go, yeah. you know me now? Yeah. And yeah. we're like, oh, so... <laughs> Uh, every time that happens, it, it, when, when something like that happens, I say to Misty, "You know me now." You know, <laughs> so yeah, we have we, we loved it. We absolutely oh, loved good, it. Good. Um, uh, but I think it's like no no word of a lie. I think uh, that um, that series, like cause you've got the underbelly underbelly series that tells these stories mm. um, about um, you know the King of the Cross, you know the Ibrahims and all this story. Mm. I think this is the best. Mm. It is number one in my in my mind. Yeah. Um, no one has done it. nothing else touches it mm. it is the best mm. um, guys if you haven't seen it get on to Paramount and check out The yeah. Last King of the Cross it's amazing but what was one of the biggest highlights for you when you were doing the series it's a bit interesting because I, I even for me I was a little bit once I got it and they flew me back I was like I was like really like you know because they did global casting mm. for this show and I'm like oh that's like I was still kind of like a little bit shocked mm. and also at the same time I feel like there was sort of, there would be, you know, expectations that, are you Madame Tien? You know, mm. like, but I think in, when it came down to makeup, hair, um, and the support mm-hmm. that it got to get into character has been tremendous. So mm. I, I'm really grateful for that. But it was, it's, it's, you know, the, the series, there's moments where I did quite feel it. It was mm. quite emotional mm. as well because I realized the character, we're playing characters, but they're real. They're, mm. they're, they're, there's some truth you know, there's a there's a real heartbeat and there's a story behind every character and they really, really want to get by and they really want to get what they want. So, mm. yeah, so it's it's been a good, you know, process. Yeah, I, again, I was so proud of you um, seeing you on that screen. Um, like, yeah, one, one of us have made it, man. Aww. She's out there doing it. Uh, she's, like, up there with these big actors. She's now a big actor up there doing it. You know, I can see that all of that work that was behind you. Like, mm. so I've been, you know, we've been following each other for years. I know. You know, um, from all of the TV work you've done, commercials, mm. own movies, directing mm. your own stuff. You know, um, even you know, even movies like, um, you know, my uh, my mother, the action star. Yeah. You know, we've taken that to uh, to the uh, to the um, the stage as well. Mm. Mm. Uh, all this hard work, and then you you, mm. you you see that that hard work pays off. Yeah, yeah, it really does. I, I you know what? I think it's the the bit of a marathon hey it Ross. is a marathon and i find that people like us right like we we do we do what we do we do it with so much love and passion mm. and then other people look at that and they go you know what i, I think you that. should do this i think you should do no like even for you when i met, first met you i'm like mm. when i have to talk to you i'm like i need him to be my film <laughs> you know what i mean because there's something yeah, about you and even though we we've got multiple arms juggling mo- plates but we just keep going because we just love it you yeah. know and people see that so we keep it's yeah. an obsession. Mm. It's definitely it an obsession. Is. It is. Um, and it has to be. Um, people talk about passion. I talk about, well, passion's um, the fuel that fuels the obsession. Mm. Mm. Um, uh, passion, like if you really want to see passion, like you've got to be at it for 10 years, 15 years. Mm. Um, I was saying this to uh, Ryan on the last uh, podcast because, um, uh, you know, everyone when they get out of film school or acting school mm. all want to go into this big feature film and yeah be, you know, uh, Scorsese or they want to be, you know, um, Leonardo DiCaprio or they want to be, you know, um, uh, Susan Saradin, man. They all want to be these big people. Yeah. But you've got to realise that it's, uh, it takes work. Yes. It's a lot of work. Like um, your two bare hands, mm. having to do things. Yeah. I feel like sometimes people think that, oh, you know, I've done this now, I should get the opportunities, mm. but not realise you have to use your two bare hands and figure things out. Mm. You know, you have to be quite a hands-on person. Experience. And then as with time goes along, then you, you build your team mm. and then you, you know, you delegate or you find other people better mm. um, than you at certain roles and mm. then you start building upwards, you know. And you, next thing you know, you, you get lots of things happening mm. to you because of that ecosystem. Yeah, and it, mm. it has a, a momentum effect. If you keep mm. at it, the momentum, like, it's not just about motivation, it's about mm. momentum. Yeah. 
Um, cause sometimes, and as well, cause sometimes, you know, you get out of bed, you're like, oh man, this is going to be hard today. Mm. That's mm. the motivation part. Yeah. But if you keep, keep doing that, mm. you have the momentum and it's, in, it's near impossible to stop at some points. Yeah. 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 You just can't yeah. stop. And I think it comes down to also realizing that maybe what, like the thing that you're doing, like it is part of a bigger thing mm. it, it, beyond you because I find that there are days where I feel oh, I'm feeling pretty sad today but then I realize oh, wait a minute that's just a moment that's yeah. just me be- being human mm. but really I'm only sad for that moment because all the things I do is actually working itself out it's being celebrated or people really f- feel it and want to come on board mm. you know? so you just keep going yeah yeah so yeah you us. do mm. you do just keep yeah that is us we mm. do keep going mm. Um, you know, some things uh, stick, some things don't. Uh, mm. I've had, you know, films that have flopped, I've had mm. films that have made it. Oh, yeah. Um, and, you know, being a part of successes, being a part of failures. Mm. All of them are a lesson. Mm. All, of it, all of it's a lesson. Mm. Uh, but then you've got to understand why you do it. Like, for me, directing is one of those, oh, exactly, ex- especially EPing at the moment. I do a lot of executive producing at the moment. Mm. And you're still a director in a way. Yeah. You just don't have that, um, you don't have full creative controls because mm. that's at the director's hands, right? But you have control of the project. You're yes. directing everyone that's in the project. That's what I learned about. I go, it's actually very similar to directing, mm. being an EP. Mm. Um, you get the same jolly out of it and you still get that product at the end. And uh, I realized my power as an EP, because mm. I, I, just, I just know everything. Yeah. You know, like I'm just one of those people that ha- is obsessive <laughs> and I, I research it to its utmost that's end. So cool. Yeah. Um, and I learn everything that there is to know about it. So from an, mm. you know, everything from a pre-production, production, and post-production, mm. everything along that chain. There's mm. not much that I don't know about how yeah. that comes together. Mm. So that's what an EP needs. A yeah. good EP needs to know that whole thing. Oh yeah. So does a director. Mm. But um, as the EP, I've been really enjoying that. So I really enjoy getting the best out of people. Yeah. At that moment when I see someone winning and mm. I help them win, mm. it's a great feeling. Mm. But uh, you exposed me to another feeling, though, is that is um, monologues and uh, fight scenes in movies as an ah. actor. That's a whole other box and dice. That's um, quite thrilling. Mm. Um, so I get thrilled by that. Because mm. um, I've always been a behind-the-camera sort of guy, like a voiceover artist mm. or a, an, ed- an editor. Mm. Um, and I get a buzz out of that because you see your content getting around. Yeah. Like, I, see your, I saw your posts because um, you'd see yourself on the bus. Ah! Oh. You know, see your advertisements. <laughs> yeah. You'd be like, there, there's... That, 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 that's the thing I did. Yeah. That's that feeling, right? Yeah. When you see your work out there. But uh, I'd like to see those things intersect where, as an actor, where, um, you know, I'd like to be on the side of a bus one day. Yeah. <laughs> man, I'm always thinking, like, it's funny because my, my Elizabeth, my sister, who's a screenwriter, and I, we were writing for our trilogy. Well, we had this ambition of doing next few few films after mm. Echo 8. And mm. Elizabeth's like, oh, you know, Ross, you know, like, um, I don't know. He's, I just keep on seeing his head in the <laughs> I'm writing this particular character and having him. And I'm like, you know what? If I talk to him, I'll, I'll yeah, I'm slip in. it in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll say it on air right now. I'm totally in. Because the way she what wrote it, I'm like, oh, yeah, Ross will make that really funny. Because I can, I can imagine what kind of, like, a option A, B, C he would mm. do. And he would sometimes give us an option D that's mm. even more funnier. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's park it there and I'll yeah. talk to him about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm totally down for that. Because you did so well with Operation Conflu. Like, you were oh. pretty much, people remembered you. I got emails. Yeah. About you. Oh, wow. People were oh, like, this, oh, yeah. Right. Oh, you're too kind. Uh, I'm serious. Sure. I was like, oh, wow. You, you've got some fan mail here. <laughs> got fan mail from Operation yeah. Gun Flu. Yeah. Again, guys, go check it out. Uh, another good movie. But yeah, I, I, yeah, same though. I did get a lot of um, response from that. A lot of people um, have stopped me and going, man, I'm really watching that movie. I'm like, you saw that? <laughs> wow. How did you see that? It was ironic though. Um, I was, um, someone was talking to me about it while I was over in Perth. And I said, oh, I don't think it's been released yet. Let me have a look online. Yeah. And I, and it had been released 15 minutes ago. And I sent you a message. Yeah, I know. I, that's when I saw it. I'm like, oh, okay. It, it's out there. Yeah, it's out there. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh, I wonder if Maria knows this. I'm like, oh, I don't, maybe someone's stolen the movie or something. I better check with her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And I'm like, hey, these guys have released the movie. Can I share it? And you're like, yeah, go for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I was like, uh, she must think I'm really on the ball <laughs> <laughs> sending her this That's message. So cool. It's like, was he trawling the internet every five <laughs> minutes seeing there's the release of this movie? Um, but yeah, no, it was just by coincidence mm, um, mm, that, mm. Um, that it got released. Mm. Um, and uh, yeah, then I put it out on my socials and like, yeah, my inbox blew up. Yeah. It was amazing. Yeah. Um, it's, yeah, it's that in another film that, another film that I directed running on empty, I got the same sort of um, uh, reception from yeah. you know where people are messaging going love that movie mm. can we make another when are you going to make another one 
you know, all that kind of yeah. you know, language, you know, so it was You've really cool. you totally got on-screen presence, like naturally. You just need to milk it. You need to go, you know what, I'm going to put myself on camera on, and allow myself for other people to put me on camera. Yeah, I, I think I'm open to the idea, mm. uh, especially after that experience. Um, but there's always been, I've always been a performer at heart. Mm. Um, as a muso, um, being on stage, um, I've always been a performer at heart. Um, and I think... Yeah, and it comes into that, the intersection of all of this, and I think we share this in common, mm. is um, we're storytellers. Yes. Um, and there's different ways to tell a story. Mm. Uh, the first way I was telling stories was, you know, writing lyrics for heavy metal bands and, mm. like, doing these really heavy topics, you yeah. know. Um, and uh, that's a way of storytelling. Mm. Guitarists have their way of telling stories. Cinematographers have their way of telling mm. stories. Writers certainly have a way of telling stories. Actors tell that story, mm. you know. Um, and I think, you know, being along that whole production chain and I've done pretty much everything along the way, like, uh, even Foley artists <laughs> tell a story, right? Yeah. Um, and that's what it is. It's about wanting to tell a story. Mm. And I, I don't know, I think it's something about Australia. I don't yeah. know what it is. You know, um, if you look at, um, the first production company that mm. made a feature film yeah, right. is an Australian company. Really? Yep. The first feature length movie ever made. It's called Ned Kelly. Oh, yeah. I heard about that. Yeah. Ned that's Kelly the first the one. Gang, yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ned Kelly, The Gang. That's yeah, it. Yeah, uh, That was the first feature-length um, wow. movie ever made. Mm. Um, and that was made in Australia. If you look at um, First Australian Culture, yeah. they're the first culture to tell a story with a fourth wall. Oh, really? So, yeah, yeah. So, you've got a fourth wall, obviously. Yeah, yeah, you've got yeah. an audience, audience, a stage. stage. It's got music. Yeah. Yeah. It's got a story yeah. and it's acted out. Mm. So they're the first people to do that. So something about Australia yeah. that makes us storytellers. There's, there's a innovation with that. Yeah. But I, I still feel like Australians, like we do have this thing where we call it tall poppy syndrome. Yeah. I like, do feel it a lot. Yeah, I es- do. Especially now that I'm, I'm in between Australia and the US. Mm. Whereas when I'm in the US, people will like celebrate your stuff. You're like, yeah, I just did a film. What? And they, they go, wait, when's your next one? When, 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 when do we support it? And I'm like, what? And in Australia, it was like, yeah, oh, good on you. Yeah, yeah. That's it. He's a pat. <laughs> yeah, it's terrible. Uh, I like. I try to convince people to think differently in Australia. Mm. Um, like you know, uh, b- back to you know doing bands. You know, yeah. Um, when you know, I started doing bands as a teenager, um, all the way up into my forties, right? Mm. And it's I start. I did see a, a slight shift, mm. especially after COVID. People mm. were more supportive, but up until that point, um, it was that tall poppy syndrome where um, people didn't want to support you. Um, like in a, in the American audiences, they want to support you. Yeah, they're like yeah. they're excited to support you. They'll buy your merch. Yeah, uh, but in Australia, you'd be like you know uh, fighting for people to buy you know to buy your shirt yeah. or to buy to buy the beer coaster that supports the band. You know, mm. um, and I just found yeah that those cultures are totally different in that way. Mm. Americans celebrate their heroes. Yeah, and uh, Australians they cut them down. Mm. Like mm. we even have sayings, right? Um, uh, like uh, you, you figure out these negative sayings. Like if you were singing in the car with um, perhaps your parents, right? Mm. And they'd say, don't quit your day job. Ah, oh, you know? yeah, There's right. that tall poppy That's syndrome. Right. You know, mm. not, you know, it's that pull down comment, yeah. right? It's yeah. funny. Yeah. You know, we say that to be funny. Funny, but still. But it's still. It's ingrained in the culture. It's ingrained. Even you know? in our humour, it's ingrained. Yeah. But then doesn't that, don't you feel like it kind of does stop people from really thinking outside the box because mm-hmm. there's that sense of then now they're also pulling themselves subconsciously down first sometimes, yeah. I find. Because I meet people and sometimes they don't want to celebrate themselves. Like, yeah. And you're like, wow, that's congrats. And like, you tell them congratulations and they're just like, they feel weird. They can tell they don't feel comfortable. Yeah, 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 yeah getting like praise, that. yeah. Because yeah. they're so used to putting themselves down as well. Mm. The imposter monster. Like, we're our own worst critics, right? Mm. Like, mm. Um, it, it, you know, that's what I think, find it's funny. Because you're like, it, it, there's always going to be someone in a crowd that's not going to like your content. You're not yeah, going to win yeah. everyone over. Mm. Uh, it'd be great if you could. Some people that do. But um, generally, most um, artists, they're not going to win everyone. Mm. Uh, and that's, that's, the whole, that's the whole idea, right? Yeah. It's subjective. Mm. Um, but, uh, yeah, the, there's moments there where... You, you know, they should support the idea. Mm. If you like it, yeah, announce that. Yeah, you go, yeah, good for you, man. Mm. Go for it. Go mm. on, buy a shirt, man. Mm. Uh, like oh, every time I go to a, um, a a film festival or if I go to a um, if I go to a, a show, yeah. I'll buy their merch. Yeah, stand up the front. Go and introduce yourself. Say hello to them. Congratulate them yeah. on their work. Mm. But because um, they're already fighting their imposter monster. Oh yeah, they're already fighting it. Mm. They're already going. Oh man, I don't. I'm an imposter. I don't belong here. Mm, mm, mm. Um, but the reality is, no one belongs anywhere, anywhere, and nothing is fair. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Nothing's That's fair. True. Nothing yeah. is fair. Yeah. 
So you may as well. Yeah. Um, you may as well do it. May as well do what you like doing. Mm. Um, but uh, yeah, let's uh, transition to Echo 8. Oh, yes. Recently, uh, I want to watch it again, actually. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> okay. uh, well, I watched it while I was working. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I had too much on this weekend. I'm like, yeah. I've got to watch this film. Yeah. I'm like, wow, fight scene after fight scene. Yeah, this is fantastic. Yeah. Um, uh, what's Echo 8 sort of. Don't give too much away, but okay. what's Echo 8 about? Echo 8 about? I don't know. Like, I, I always go, it's like a. In a nutshell, it's basically a migrant story. <laughs> and, and, you know, someone's just trying to find themselves. They're like, that's pretty much in an action tone and set in the backdrops of Cabramatta yeah. with, you know, assassins and gangs and all that. Yeah. But, yeah, it's, it's a feature film that's made on very little money, 10000 And yeah. it's, you know, 90 minutes and... Yeah, we just had our local screening in Fairfield and mm-hmm. then Art Gallery of New South Wales. Yeah, Art Gallery of New South Wales. Did, yeah, did a that. screening. And um, yeah, we're now looking at making the prequel and sequel, which we hope to get the script done in two months' time mm-hmm. for a table read. Yeah. So we're moving fast. Because the reason why I'm moving so fast, because even after Last King of the Cross, I was like, oh, I've done that. Now what? Mm. Otherwise, I'll wait. You know how when you wait and then a mm. year goes by, another year goes yeah, by, and then you lose that momentum. Mm. So then uh, Elizabeth, uh, myself, and Takashi were like, you know what? If we think we got the balls to do something, <coughs> let's well. do it. Because then the locals in you know our area could be like, hey, they did it. They did one film, two, three. They're doing it, and it's not reliant on the system to get it done. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's a really big point. That's yeah. a super big yeah. point. And, and it's something that I've seen through Made in the West, right? Yeah. Um, we only had, when we started like 12 years ago, mm. um, you would have like six filmmakers mm. and they're all doubting themselves. Yeah. All got the imposter monster problem, right? Mm. So we started celebrating those champions, mm. you know? And, that, and I, I, I totally adapted. We were talking about it before, right? Yeah. I adapted that from an American um, ideology. Right. Celebrate your champions, yeah. man. Celebrate them. Promote them. Mm. Tell them that they're awesome. Mm. Um, but be genuine in doing so. Yeah. It's got to be authentic. If they've made a shitty film, <laughs> you can't go, this is film, This is amazing. You yeah. can't do that. Yeah. It has to be good. Yeah. But if it's good, mm. give them that praise. Mm. Um, and, uh, you know, then we'd have, you know, six champions. And then mm. they, those guys have gone on to um, make feature films. Yeah. Um, and they're still making shorts. It's amazing. And then the next cohort's there because they're now, look, the younger people are looking at, the, the generation um, above them going, mm. well, they're making movies, man. Yeah. Um, what, we should make movies too. Yeah. Now, all of a sudden, there's this massive catalogue of work. And then, um, you know, we talk to uh, Blacktown Arts. They've mm. got their screen. There's screens down in Melbourne, screens in Liverpool, oh, yeah. screens everywhere. Mm. So many screens that people mm. don't think about. And we go and broker this content for them. Yeah. You know? So that content, is, you can sell it. If you can exactly. sell that content, it's got value, right? Yeah. And that's now. Yeah. That's now. Imagine 10 years' time. Yeah. I find it so funny. With Echo A, like we put it into festivals. Mm. Um, a lot of the festivals that picked it up was international. Mm. In Australia, it doesn't seem to fit in with any programming. It's, it's really market. strange. I don't hard know whether market. it's because it's got that action element where sometimes I feel like in Australia, they don't really like it to be genre yeah. or looking a particular way or it looks too much there's too many Asians in the film yeah like, probably I think, yeah. I think it's probably the latter actually yeah. Um, because it, yeah because it's a big problem yeah um, like we get uh, we get um, you know pat on the back all the time mm. for um, colour on screen mm. uh, at Made in the West and we have to remind people that's yeah. not what we're doing yeah. we're not doing that we're just showing content man um, exactly just so it turns out like I think the first time I witnessed this I had a um, uh, there was a um uh, a Southeast Asian uh, lady that um, uh, made a film. Mm, mm. Film one made in the West. Yeah. People come up to us. I think it was... I won't mention who. Mm. People came up to us and uh, they said, oh, it's amazing that you're promoting uh, women of colour, uh, women directors. Oh. And I quickly shut them down. I yeah. said, it's not what we're doing, man. No. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um, her movie was really good. Good, yeah. That's... that's Period. Mm. That's it. That's it. Her mm. movie was really good. It, there was no us... Leaning on judges, going, hey, can you make sure that this girl, like, she's really good to promote. It's going to be good for our promotion. Oh, make sure that she wins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 None of that. Yeah. Like she won, man. Yeah. And and by saying that, um, that the that the ethnicity mm. is the important part mm. takes away from the credit of the film. Yeah. So I can say this for audiences. This is what I've witnessed with audiences. Mm. Audiences don't care. Yeah. They they love it. Mm. Like you look, you go to a main the West event. Right, three hundred people there. They love it. They don't care that someone's Asian on screen, no. or someone's white on screen, or someone's you know um, uh, Sudanese on screen. Mm. No, no one cares. Mm. They just want to see a good story. Story. 
Yeah. Right? Yeah. So I think it's the gatekeepers that are more oh, doing that, to I be honest so. with you. Yeah. And that's yeah. why Main the West sort of started up. Yeah. Because you go and see these biases. Yeah. Postcode bias. That's why we called it Made in the West. Like, <laughs> yeah, postcode bias. Yeah, let's wow. let's just let's just fight it directly. Yeah. Let's not try to get in the back door. Let's mm. not try and retrofit a um, a poor me, low social, yeah. economical argument here. Let's mm. just um, put on the biggest, most uh, fanciest mm. gala event we can. Wow. And put the word West in it. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and, you know, made in the West. It's very specific. Mm, mm. It's like, we're proud of this region, man. Yeah. And we've got the best stories. 100%. Um, and if you look at the ratio of artists here versus the rest of the country, uh, we compete with West Melbourne. Oh, right. Right? The, the, the artist ratios. Yeah, yeah. Right? The, you know, basically, you know, if you look at 10 people, mm. what are all their jobs and how many of them are artists? Mm. There's more artist concentration mm. in Western Sydney than anywhere in the country. Wow. So there's more filmmakers, more yeah. painters. More actors, yeah. you name it. Yeah. They're everywhere. Mm. Like, it's hard not to find an artist, right? Mm, mm. Um, do you know how much arts funding yeah. goes into Western Sydney uh, from a federal and oh. uh, it's a really small number? Really? Mm-hmm. 3%. Where's the rest go? <laughs> everywhere else. Goes wow. everywhere else. Um, goes, uh, you know, places like the Opera House. It will go yeah. uh, to. Uh, well, look, there's actually a big kick. In, uh, that 3%. Um, the majority of that 3% is the powerhouse construction in Parramatta. Oh, wow. Okay. So it's actually less than 3%. Jeez. It's less than that. Oh, my gosh. And and that less than 3% is people like me and you getting that funding. Yeah, but then uh, it's funny and because people like Ryan getting I that find money. that made in the West, like, is so influential. Mm. Like, everyone knows it. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's like, spread, like, in terms of wild, like, as in, in terms of word of mouth, and it's generated so much, mm. like, uh, like, sort of this people feel at home. Mm-hmm. But yet the institutions are kind of looking and go, oh, they're just community. Like, I feel like what is with that? There's still a stigma there. And it's like, you've been doing it for so long. There's festivals that come in and out and they get funding. They drop, they, they start and they drop off. I can tell you why. I can tell you why that happens. Why? It's their money model. So the way that these um, festivals come up, and I always say they last three to four years. Oh. They always do. Our mm. competitors, we even had competitors that have done it on the same day as us, right? Uh, I won't okay. mention all of them, <laughs> but they're out there. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, but look, we've got two good competitors that have started up recently. One's called um, uh, Starburst Film, which is a Penrith one. Yes. And then there's um, Inner West Fest, oh. which is at Newtown, right? I think I heard it saw. On yeah, the yeah. I, I, the, some of the copy on their websites looks very familiar, just, oh, just to say. Okay. But anyway, um, nonetheless, you know, yeah, yeah. nothing wrong with borrowing things from mm, people. Mm-hmm. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> um, these festivals are start up because they realise that there's a market. Ah. Oh. Right? And they've all got government funding. Mm. And I, I, I always say to my crew, like, oh, these guys are going to take us. And I say, hey, 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 hey. Yeah, yeah. Just remember their model. Mm. So I have to remind them of the model. They've got a government-funded model. Mm. If there's a change in government, mm. if there's a, like, say, these guys have got state funding, uh, right? Mm. If there's a change in government that aren't sympathetic to the arts in that area. Yeah. Their festival is shut They're down. Gone. They're gone. Yeah. Their lights are out. Yeah. You have to have advertising revenue. You have to have corporate sponsorship. Yeah. Someone that actually sees value a long term in mm. what you're doing. That takes more time to build. You have to swallow your pride for the first three years. Mm. Your content's not going to be the best. Mm. Your, seat, your, your bums on seat's not going to be as high. Yeah. But eventually, it will grow and it's unstoppable. Yeah. It's, Maine the West has never received government funding. Yeah. I think that's actually, in the long run, it's actually a good model. Because yeah. when I went over to America, I'm actually seeing independent cinema mm. and filmmakers be able to finance their films mm. just off, like, you know, crowdfunding and, mm. and they have the numbers. Like, it's not... Because they're like, we don't have government support so we don't even know what that I is. Don't care. So they don't actually rely on that at all. So mm. they're, But they're, in the long run, they build that traction to keep on making movies. Like, there was one guy named Jason Horton. He's made over mm. like 70 films. Mm. Like, what? Like in, 70 mo- films? Yeah, 70 movies and like all crowdfunded. And the Mahal Brothers in Vegas, they're making yeah. all their films where they're raising like 250k easy. Yeah, wow. You know, on crowdfunding within like a week or two. I'm like, how the... <laughs> like, yeah, how? My brain just go, actually, I need to learn from this because... Good SEOs, man. Yeah, <laughs> Some rather good SEO than apply stuff. for grants because, you know... Oh, grant fatigue. Like, you, you, mm, you, grant of, all, fatigue. you yes. of all people would understand grant fatigue, man. Mm. Like, how mm. long does it take your team to put a grant together Yeah. Um, to maybe get it? Maybe, you, yeah. You might not get it. Yeah. And you don't even know who's assessing this. It's just you put it in and you just kind of hoped for the best. Yeah, and you go, and, oh, I hope I've got these. I hope I fit the tick boxes. Cause yeah. Because like, you've got to lever it to tick boxes mm. and you're like... Now I've got to lean on what is the um, the smallest part of the market, like 
You know, uh, for me, it's the guy from Campbelltown from the low social economical mm. background that raised from adversity that was mm. in a bad neighborhood that did really well. Yeah. That's a veteran, you know, like, mm. yawn. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, not, yeah. What about the movies we're making, man? Exactly. The, 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 the origin story is great. Like, mm. that's fine, but it's such a small piece of it. But that's where the funding's based. Yes. Like, if I go, I, if I go, I'm just a white dude who wants to make money. Yeah. No way I'm going to yeah, get the funding. Yeah, yeah, it's not yeah, going to happen. Yeah, you gotta, you got to lean on those... Uh, um, those boxes. Uh, those boxes, yeah, you yeah. know. And you're like... Oh, you got to show them, we've got multiple boxes here. Yeah. Let me present you this box, or do you like this box? Or they cross over. <laughs> like, yeah. it's yeah. just like that. You're like, okay, so then I'm putting, you know, and then it turns into inclusivity. Mm. Like, this is how I'm being inclusive. Mm. Um, mm. And, you know, and they go, I don't want to have that conversation. Like, I just want to cast the person mm. that's right for the role. Mm. Um, like I remember, um, when I f- did my first few films, um, a uh, big shout out to Quentin, actually Quentin Jung. Um, uh, he, he showed up and I said, uh, he goes, I, you can't, he was for a drug dealer, um, position that was based on Tyler Durden, right? <laughs> yeah, so this yeah. fight club character yeah. that wears leather jackets, it's dressed flash and, mm. and he goes, oh, do you want me to do this? Um, uh, especially at that time, you know, he wanted that Asian accent. Yeah. I'm like, nah, man, I want you to actually ochre it up a bit. I want you to be Aussie ochre. He goes, no one, no one ever asked for that, man. I'm like, but I do. Yeah. And that's what I want. Yeah. I want to blow people away. Yeah. With authenticity, man. That's mm-hmm. what I want to do. And you run into those sort of things and uh, yeah, you realize that, yeah, you, sometimes you've got to play to your stereotypes, mm. um, especially mm. someone like myself, like um, Aussie ochre, um, larrikin dude. Mm. Um, it's hard for me to be a serious person, you know. Um, sometimes you've got to lean into that, but that's if the art calls for it. Mm, yeah. But when we go in for funding, sometimes you've got to sort of retrofit these things on. Yeah. You're like, oh, it's frustrating that you've mm, got to do that. Mm. And then you don't know if you're going to get the funding or not. Yeah. Um, and then it'll take you six months to fill it out. Your yeah. team's exhausted and you get fatigue. And then if you don't get the funding, then you're depressed. Yeah. 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 And, and there's no other like sort of... Um you know, other connections from there. Because I find that if you do get corporate, at least if they just say no, or they give a little bit, or they know somebody, you know, there's still a relationship that you can still develop. Mm. Whereas funding, grants, you just put it in. You don't know who's looking at it. (laughs) You know, you never get access to them because it's just an email or a, you know. Well, to be honest, though, the people that are looking at it generally aren't industry people either. Yeah. And are you going to get a coffee with them? Yeah. It's really hard because they're probably not even interested in or not even in the, the space that you can have have access to. Well, again, though, when I've done the coffee with them, because mm. I've done that, oh. go and have the coffee with them with mm. councils, right? Mm. Generally, it's count, you know, yeah. small councils that you do that with. And uh, you can see that they're just fishing for their headline. Uh. You're going, oh, so what's your inclusivity plan? Like, I have to have an inclusivity <laughs> plan. Like- okay. Um the, the, yeah, okay, the director's Maltese, um, the editor um, uh, has Aboriginal heritage. Um, who else we got in here? Like, yeah. We didn't even think about that. We're yeah. just hiring people um, uh, based on merit. Um, yeah. And if you do that in Western Sydney, if you end up with an int- if you if you hire a whole team in Western Sydney mm. and they turn out all to be white, yeah, that's really weird Yeah. in Western Sydney. Yeah, yeah. It's totally weird, like... It's a totally multicultural place, Exactly. Man. If yeah. you're basing it on merit, you're going to have a, a garden variety of different backgrounds, oh, man. Yeah. It's just naturally. natural. Naturally yeah. and organically. You don't mm. need to try. It's just mm. going to happen. Mm. And that's why I try to um, uh, get across to people. But when you go for funding, yeah. funding they, need, they need these metrics. Yeah. And the other thing for us is um, uh, local councils. It's all postcode based. So um. because we're made in the West, mm. you know, we're getting content from... Um, uh, the north and west, yes. the west and west, and the mm. southwest, right, mm. and the inner west. Mm. So these are all different councils, and they don't mm. play along with each other. They're oh, all isolated in yeah. their own. So we don't we, we don't fit any model. Um. That's the other problem. We don't fit those models. Um, and you know, I think we almost fitted a, a startup model, but then they go, "Oh, you've been running for five years." I'm like, "It never ends." I know these like, boxes never end. Yeah, it's like, "Oh, well, I'm too new, and now I'm too old." Yeah, I'm too old. <laughs> like what? And we're like, "Ah, oh, we're just who, sick of who doing." Who makes it. up these things? You know, they're sitting there, going, mm, you know, not diverse enough, or too, you know, west or too not east. Like, it, yeah, your inclusivity plan isn't up to scratch or, you know, um, you know, there's not enough disabled content in what you're doing or, mm. you know. And I go, these, these things are, don't get me wrong, well, I don't want to sound like these things aren't important. Mm. They are mm. important. Yeah. But the approach is different. Like, mm. if you're doing content that um, is stereotypically based, then it's stereotypically based. If you're not, then you're not. Um, if the story calls for it, the story calls for it. Yeah. 
Uh, let the let the content be king. Mm. And that's what it is. Content mm. is king. Mm. It always is. The story is king. Yeah. It does, the the mechanisms that go into that are driven by passionate people, and it doesn't matter where they come from. Mm. As long as they're passionate, mm. like, we don't care. Yeah. We really don't care about. It. I don't, I've got to stop saying I don't care. Yeah. yeah. I don't mind. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Same on the positive <laughs> side. I don't mind who does it. Yeah. As long as we get it done, um, and as long as I get paid properly, like mm. that's it. It's not. It's not more complex than that. Mm. But I guess through that journey, I've learned um, resilience, mm. and long. And that and resilience gives you longevity. Yeah. So you're hanging around for a lot longer. Mm. Uh, but how's it going? Like uh, just to di- uh, uh, to digress uh, out of here. Yeah. Um, going back to Vegas soon. Mm. You're going. I think you're going to Melbourne after this. Like you're yes. on, you're on a plane today. No, no. I'm, uh, I'm actually driving, road tripping. Road I'm tripping. Bringing the Phoenix Eye team down to do a documentary. Oh, okay. So I'm doing a documentary <laughs> called Warriors: Some Women in Martial Arts um, in Australia. We Man. actually recently um, interviewed Cynthia Rothrock, mm-hmm. who fought uh, with. Michelle Yao in uh, Madam, yes, Madam, in yes, 1985, Madam. and yeah. she's done like over 60 films. Yeah, wow. Like she's a full on veteran, and she's still making films. And she's actually, it's interesting because in the interview, she said, you know what, I'm still going to, I'm now wanting to make my own films. <laughs> you know? Great. <clears throat> you know, so after being in all these big films, she's like, you know, I'm going to do it myself. And mm. I'm like, that's such an independent filmmaker spirit. Yeah. And especially even though you're in, you know, in America and you've got all the support, realizing you still need to do the groundwork. Mm. That's so cool. So I'm like, I think we're doing well on the right track if we're doing it now. Yeah. Yeah, you're always working out, right? You're always What's that? Gonna, you're always working out. Like I um, try to, yeah. Well no, yeah. I mean in the sense of like um like you know you, you know you do you do a big production like mm. um uh, Last King of the Cross, but mm. at the same time still working on Echo Eight. At the same yes. time still still working on the documentary. Yeah. Yeah. At the same time still promoting the company. At the yeah. same time still yeah. doing all your social channels. Yes. Um you know, yeah. um uh, that's for me that's working out. Oh yeah, yeah. It's, it's always working out. If you're you, juggling the plates, yeah, you <laughs> nothing's can't just, broken yet. <laughs> you can't just rest. Is my point. You can't get yeah. into a rest position. You've got to constantly be working. I think you can get into rest, but not for too long. No, because I feel like there's always a call for action mm. somewhere. You know, and for me, I, I just never want to just sit complacent on one thing. And so some people go, "Oh, you just did Last King of the Cross. You're now too big. Well, why? What are you doing back in Western Sydney?" I'm like. Because I partly live here. I partly live here. Yeah. You know, or they see me at the shops like, oh, you just, you wear the same thing over and over again for the last. I'm like, because I'm being efficient. If I had to <laughs> style and trend myself, then I can't focus on writing and developing stuff. Mm. You know what I mean? Because yeah, working out, man. You can't like think that, oh, you're on a different platform now. You're moving away this place. You're going to dress differently or be a part of another group. No. Yeah. You're essentially still the same person. You just got, you just got a break here. But you, once that's done, you got to keep going. You got to keep going. Doing. Yes, yeah, so it's well. the machine. Yeah, that's the machine, right? Mm. You got to keep the machine going, and that's um, that's why I um, I say to people about passion and mo- uh, momentum, right? Mm. Passion and momentum. Um, your passion can dry out. You can oh, yeah. you you get uh, three three years of no. There's a lot of no in the industry, kids. Just oh. saying, uh, in the film yeah. industry, a lot of no. It's kind of like the sales industry. You've got to get used to no a lot. Mm. Um, mm. You got to get used to people um, uh, criticizing you and putting it down. Mm. Um, but then at the same time, you've got to then question your own existence and go, why do I actually do this? Am I doing this for everyone else or am I doing this for me? Mm. And I find it's a bit of a paradox. So being an artist is um, a paradox, right? You're, you're selfless mm. and selfish at the same time. Mm-hmm. I'm selfish because I want to be a star. Mm. I'm selfish mm. because I want to tell my story. I'm going to mm. tell it my way. Mm. That's how I'm selfish. Mm. How I'm selfless is I want to entertain people. I want to make people feel good. I want to inspire yes. people around me to do the same thing that I'm doing. Um, so that's the real for me. That's the real identification. Yeah. Um, once you get through that three years of I'm going to be a star. This is going to be really easy. Um, when if you find your passion burning out, you've got to re-identify what you're doing. And if you come to the answer of I don't want to do this anymore, mm. then you're done. You're done. You're out. Yeah. You're already out. You didn't. You tried it out, and it's not for you. Mm. But if you go, I'm still hungry. Mm. Then you're in. Yeah. Uh, and just remind yourself of that moment every time it comes up. You go, oh, well, I'm sad. I don't want to do this today. You're like, remember that deci- time that you decided to do this? Let's just decide to do this again. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, yeah, it's about selfless, selfish. That's how I find it. Yeah. You know? And finding that balance in between as well. Mm. Like, sometimes I think, um, you know, there's like, oh, you know, why do I... I guess I had uh, some colleagues, like, why do you keep doing these 
indie films like you know <laughs> air quotations indie films in, yeah, yeah yeah it's like why why do you keep on coming back to it shouldn't you be thinking of bigger things like getting bigger roles I'm mm. like but you know what it's always going to be, be a part of another system mm. you know no matter what even if I can do a really good job mm. in acting or whatever part that I'm hired for it's still telling someone else's story or it's still being a part of something mm. else and if you've already built a community and mm. they believe in a particular narrative and they want to see it on screen mm. that's your best bet because yeah. that's the driving force of making something that you love so when I watched Echo 8 on the big screen I'm like as much as I cringe at every scene because, oh, I should have done this. It's hard to watch your own content sometimes. I know. Sometimes, yeah. But at the same time, I look back and I'm like, wow, these people are watching and they're really enjoying it. Mm. There's something that they're, they're taking from that. We're doing something right. Yeah. You know, yeah. and that's priceless. Yeah. Totally. That's mm. the entertainment where you get mm. that. That's where I get that biggest thrill is the yeah. entertainment and from the construction of it, I get it from the crew and the cast yes. where I've gotten the best out of them. Where I see them win, yeah. then I'm winning. Exactly. And then I get sad in my own head. I'm like, I'm just an imposter. I don't belong here. <laughs> Someone has to come up and remind me of that. Ross, you're awesome. I'm like, yeah. am I? <laughs> All right, then I'll believe you. If you say I'm awesome, I believe you. Because in my head, it's not, that's, yeah. not, that's not the story. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I don't walk into a scene going... I've got this. I'm going yeah. to be the total best. Even like before I do a show on the podcast, mm. I'm like, okay, I've got mm. this centered. Like, it's, I find, because like, um, I get a lot of viewership out of the podcast these yeah. days. Yeah. And I can't listen to it. Wow. Like, I watch all my other content that I make because I have to, because mm. I have to build it. Mm-mm. Once I build this yeah. and put it out in the world, I don't watch you it don't ever watch again. It. Oh, I can't, because this, this is the most authentic me. Yeah. Like, when I'm on stage, yeah, I can watch myself on stage because mm. that's a character. Yeah, right. Still difficult. Yeah. But you can, you can pass such it. such an interesting thing, hey, because I do get that too. I sometimes go, because my sister was like, oh, someone spoke about you. And they go, yeah, they saw you at an event. And they're like, oh my gosh, it's Maria Tran. I'm like, why does everyone feel it's good on the outside? But why do I feel quite normal? No, like, you know what I mean? I still eat and crap and all the same thing. I just feel quite normal. Like, yeah. I'm like, I should at least feel what they feel. You know? Well, it's funny how someone said, oh, like, it took me ages to come up and talk to you, Ross. I'm like, yeah. what are you talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're like, oh, the amazing Ross. I'm like, mm. The amazing Ross, what are you talking? Just come up and talk to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's no problem. Yeah, yeah. They're like, and they, I had people that want to be on the show, and they go, I didn't want, I didn't think you'd say yes to being on the show. I'm like, wow. dude, anyone asked me to be on the show, mm. it's pretty much I'm going to put you on the show because it mm. means you're keen and you've got something to, to promote, yeah, and yeah. something to talk about, yeah. something I can learn, yeah. right? Um, that's that's what it's about. Um, but you know what? I think both of us, um, what I realised that what we're trying to do is we're trying to keep. You know, we're letting people see that we can be grounded wherever we go, mm. right? So you and I will never have a barrier. We're like, no, 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 we're too good. Mm. No, 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 we're now not gonna be with p- particular crowds. Mm. We never because we're so um, people can access us and connect with us mm. in at any moment, and we're never gonna shut the door. I think no. like we're able to do that. Whereas I've, a- I've actually seen other artists they get to a point where they're like, no, 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 I'm not talking. To blah anymore. Yeah, I watched yeah. that. I've watched that happen with a few people. And you're like, wow, really? And then you, you a couple of years later, they just they they're just gone. Come, they're gone. They're gone. They disappear. I'm like, that wasn't needed. Yeah, they forgot their grassroots, man. Wow. That's what. That's I think that's what we're essentially talking about, right? Mm. It's not just about staying in the trenches. Yeah. It's about leading the leading. You know, being the general of the army. Mm-mm. It's also being about being the private in the army as well. Yeah. You know, it's about being able to do all of those roles and mm. and and not having the ego in there. Yeah. Um. You know, and don't get me wrong. You need a little bit of ego when you're doing things. Mm. Especially mm. things of high confidence. Yeah. Um, but you essentially you need a controlled ego in that sense, not a you know to be um, egotistical. Yeah. Um, you need to be grounded in that way, and to be accessible, mm. to be open, mm. um, and uh, vulnerable. Like as I said, I can't even watch this my own show. That's how vulnerable it is. Oh. I'm like, I'll go back and watch this, and be like, oh, what are you doing? <laughs> Shouldn't have said it that way. What are you doing? Oh, turn it off. Turn it off. Um, I, I and even editing it, I'm um, getting out the snippets. Sometimes I find it hard. So really? Gonna, yeah. But you sound so natural, though. You, you I know. Sound like I get you can told, talk I, underwater. I get told that a lot. Yeah. Um. But um. Yeah. Listening back to my own voice because this is again, this is the authentic me. Oh. This is this is this is you know the pagey train is me. Mm. Like, like the whole Roscoe pagey train is an alias, right? Because mm. that's when I was in the military. Um. Uh. I wasn't allowed to be online. So I had to have a name that was an alias, so yeah. I could at least have some small connection on the internet. Yeah. Um, and that's when Facebook came out, two thousand eight, whenever it was. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Roscoe Pagey Train comes from Roscoe Pico Train, which is a character out of the Dukes of Hazard. Oh. He's deaf. Yeah, he's a this dim-witted deputy. <laughs> um, and he's like a yeehaw sort of dude, yeah. right? Um, and people, uh, especially ex Jenners and mm-hmm. uh, baby boomers, would all always call me um, Roscoe Pico Train. <laughs> 
Okay. So I changed it to a Roscoe Pagey train, yeah. right? Ah. And then I'll go, uh, and, and, and rest my friend Dave, who recently passed away, um, he named it the Pagey Train. He oh. named my, he named the show the Pagey Train. So yeah. I said, well, I'm going to call this podcast, man. He goes, the Pagey, Pagey Train. train. And I go, what does that mean? He goes, well, it's your alias, right? Because he knows the alias story. Yeah. And he goes, but it's the Pagey Train of Thought. It's the drinks card on the Pagey Train. Uh. It's the journey on the Pagey Train. Like it, it works on so many ways. Yeah. So that's why it's called the Pagey it's Train. It's got a nice ring to it. Yeah, yeah, it does, yeah, it right? Does. Yeah. And that's then, and really, that's the authentic me. Mm. It, it, like talking with me and, and 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 hanging out with me is always a journey. Yeah, I'm not a destination person. I'm a journey person. <laughs> You're like a, yeah, yeah, <laughs> journey person. The journey is the destination. Can I ask, mm. um, if that's the case, if you had an alternate you life, mm. like that was complete opposite, what would have it Ooh. been like? You think if you didn't <sighs> go down this journey and you're really like. Very square, kind of thing. Oh, very square. Um, it, well, it, it, I would have to um, uh, channel my father at the moment oh. for that because uh, he had aspirations for me. Because mm. um, you know, I was an ex, I'm an ex soldier, and that normally ex soldiers go into um, government work. Yeah. So I imagine I'd be, um, you know, a government worker of some kind, whether it was a policeman or a, um, uh, you know, working for DFAT, something mm. like that. Um, a lot of us guys would go over to. Um, diplomatic roles mm. um, usually have an administrative role but then you know another role on the side mm. where you dive in front of the uh, the ambassador to take the bullet oh that kind oh, of yeah, work yeah, yeah. Right. so that's where I think I'd be yeah wow and do you think it would have all the creative stuff would it still have come out because you know you've got a lot of impossible for it not to <sighs> It's impo- that's why I've ended up here. Yeah, yeah. You know, I went against the grain. I went yeah. against my uh, family's wishes of what they wanted for me in education. Like, I remember like um, my family busted me balls about it. Like, what are you going to get with a communications degree? I'm like, right. Well, with before I'd finished my degree, I was running a TV station. So that's what mm. I, that's what I did with a communications degree. So yeah. they sort of calmed their farm after that. Yep, yep. But um, still, yeah. But still, it was. Bit of a bit annoying, mm. you know, because you're already putting yourself down. You don't need others yeah. putting it down <laughs> yeah. as well, especially family going, yeah. oh, what are you doing that for?" Yeah, um, yeah, it's the same with the metal band, right? Yeah, the old man would say, "What are you in a metal band for?" Mm. You know, uh, and I worked out the money on it. I think we spent over ten years running that studio, sixty grand, and I think we made mm. forty. So we lost mm. twenty grand between five of us mm. to do what we love yeah. over it's ten fine. years. Right? Yeah, you know, one hundred and fifty shows. Mm. It's great. And he goes, "Why would you do that?" I go, "Well, I could." Go to a therapist and talk about my problems. <laughs> That's a good one. Or I could get people to pay for tickets while I shout at them through a microphone. That's such a entrepreneur. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good I one. Could redirect it, you know, redirect this anguish and give it to someone else um, only, and make them pay for it. Only a creative would come up with that, eh? Like, <laughs> therapy or pay to get to shout at oh, Yeah, yeah. make a profit off it. Yeah. yeah. And, um, but yeah, that's, 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 that's where that's at. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, I remember when I, even when I was in the military, I was in bands. Mm. So I was in bands, you know, when, when I was in Townsville, I was yeah. in a band there. I was in a band in Perth, mm. um, you know, uh, and played a lot of stuff on the scene too. Mm. Um, so, uh, you know, played played music all over the country as a heavy metal vocalist. Wow. Just in my spare time because I couldn't not, I, I, it just beckoned me. Yeah. I was obsessed. Still am. Like I, upstairs, I've got a full music set up up there. Like yeah. my neighbours know how, <laughs> what music I like. That would be spun out as well because I, go, <laughs> I would do something like you know, Lamb of God. You know, yeah. you know, walk with me, you know, sort of stuff, right? Yep. And then I'd be over to Otis Redding, like sitting on the dock <laughs> of the bay, watching the tide so rolling. You know. Wow. And I'd be, <laughs> be super confused, like, who is this I'll, guy? I'll tell Elizabeth, um, he, he does these voices. <laughs> I do a lot of voices. <laughs> well, I've been working on this character, actually. You, yeah. po- you popped into my head the other day. Yeah. Uh, because we're going we're gonna to be, I think we might be in Vegas <gasps> uh, ju- January next year. Oh, really? Okay. And I was going to say, hey, if you've got like a short film that's going on. Oh, my God. And then, then I thought, you because know, I just run silly um, scenarios in my head all the time. Mm-hmm. I'm like... Man, if she did have a movie and she was doing a yank thing, what could you do as a yank? I'm like, do you have any yank voices you do? I'm like, I do actually. I do have yank voices I do. I have the mo- you know, movie guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I thought, but what? you can't be a movie guy in the movie. <laughs> that's, the- that's not going to work. Uh, what else have you got? And I realised, oh, I can do a southerner. I can do a southern accent. And then I thought, yeah, but that's very stereotypical again. I don't want to really, that's not something I'd be excited about. Now I was working on this other character oh. that is like this sort of dismissive, like um, arms dealer sort of dude, right? Right. It's like, and, and, and his favourite saying is no doubt. 
That's the only thing I kept working in my head, like, no doubt. Yeah, no doubt right. we get that done, mate. It'd be all right. right you know? yeah, so yeah, I'd be yeah, working yeah. out how I could do these gritty voices for these gritty roles, right? Oh. So always working on characters, man. So cool. Always working on them. There's, it's just I can't help it. Natural I have performer. To, have to work sure. on characters. Yeah. Um, and always writing stories in, in my mind when mm-hmm. I'm bored. Mm-hmm. Um, I, uh, some of the stories that I write um, are quite in-depth. Mm-hmm. Very in-depth, uh, in depth, um, especially sci-fi and gangster sort of stuff. Yeah. I, I sort of float between sci-fi and gangster. Yeah, right. That, the, that's the main writing I do, yeah. Mm. Um, interesting. I love character be- development and I like playing those characters in my mind and mm. then sometimes rehearsing what they would actually sound like. Wow. Yeah. What's your process for writing? Because I'm only starting to get into it because I have to write, like, Echo 8, the prequel, so... <laughs> There's a lot. I've got, I do have advice for this. Yeah, yeah. I do. Um, it, it's personality um, sort of based mm. and workflow based. So, I ask, I'll ask, I've, I've actually asked the question that you asked of a lot of people on yeah, the show, right? Yeah. And um, I find that there's two kinds of writers. Mm. There's the blinking cursor guy. What's a blinking cursor? So, okay, I've got an idea for a movie. Sit down on a laptop, get a blinking cursor, and just start typing it out. Ah, oh, there's start, like a vomiting in it Just, out. just yeah, get yeah, it out. Yeah. doesn't matter where you start in the middle, start at the start, start mm. at the end. Um, you know, just start pumping it out. Blinking mm. cursor. Me and, you, me and the computer, let's go. Mm. Um, but uh, then there's the... Ma- I'm more of a mapping person, so... Uh, you'll see them there. There, there they are there see those cue cards oh yeah yeah. Right? so the blue ones are for characters and yep. the yellow ones are for story scenes uh. so I take a, a, a sharpie yep. and go uh, a scene in cafe um, you know uh, uh, two people come in to sit down one's from the future mm, mm. You know, put that one Stick aside on. yep. Yep. put that aside just keep writing it out I go, oh there's another character his name's Vincent uh, and uh, Vincent Lang, and he is the mob boss. Great. There's the mob boss. Um, uh, Tony Butterfield, right? So she's a prostitute. Right? Yeah. There we go. Yeah, right. I love making, by the way, I love naming characters as well. Oh, wow. Character naming is my favourite. Yeah. Like, coming yeah. up with their names is the best. Oh I find gosh. that the most exciting. Because people go, how'd you come up with that name? Like, I don't know. I just worked on it a long time. Yeah, and then it just... Oh, band names, naming... I think it comes from naming bands. Oh, okay. I'm really good at naming bands. Yeah. Like, let's name his band. Mm. Um, uh, and characters, love naming characters. Because you've got to make them sensational, but believable. Mm. You know? Like, if you get, like if you had, a, a like, a hitman, you go, Dominic Steele. Yeah, right? yeah. It's too much. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's too yeah, much. Is he a hitman or is he in a different... A porn industry? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. It's too... <laughs> It's, yeah, that's right. It's too solid, right? You're like, it hey, must be in the porn industry. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, but Dominic steals too much. So yeah. then you would go, all right, so um, we'll call him Dom. Yeah. Uh, and then you realize Dom will do. Yeah. yeah. Dom's good. Yeah. Dom yeah. is good. Dom. Yeah, and then you keep it as Dom. <laughs> yeah, keep it as Dom or then um, uh, then w- try to work out their nickname. Like, mm. um, uh, and, you know, being in the military, really good at coming up with nicknames. I'll give an example. Like, yeah. I had this friend who, uh, his last name was Kelly. Yeah. So we called him Ned. <laughs> yep. Because Ned Kelly. Ned Kelly, yep. But he was too much of a dork oh. to be Ned Kelly because he's, he, oh, he's a lovely guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's a, he was a, um, a, a, um, a electronics technician mm-hmm. and real, right, real nerdy sort of dude. Yeah, yeah. Lovely man. Yeah. Really good at his job. Um, we're like, well, Ned Kelly doesn't fit. So we call him Ned. So we call him Ned Flanders. <laughs> so he's Flanders now. Oh, okay. Because his last name's Kelly. Kelly. Obviously, his nickname is Flanders. Flanders, okay. So, yeah. you, there's a journey of a nickname, ah. right? So, naming naming names. But back to your original question is um, I would map it out. Mm. So, once I have... And the cue cards, it depends on the length of the film. So, yeah. if you're doing like a 15-minute film, you'll have that many scenes. Mm. Stick that out on the wall and go, this is the... Because you can then rearrange the order. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, you go, oh, actually, we can mumble up... The plot here, we'll put that scene over here and this scene over here. It doesn't have to be in order. Yeah. You can do it linear, uh, in a linear, uh, linear fashion and then just put it up on the ma- uh, on the wall and then put all your characters down on the wall mm. and then start populating the conversation. Yeah, yeah. right. Uh, and the conversation, that's the part that I really like as well uh. is populating the conversation. Mm. Coming up with stupid sayings and Australianisms as well, especially in gangster ones. Yeah, yeah. Do. Um, the sci-fi stuff has to be technically orientated. Yeah. Right. They, so it needs to be believable, but you need to get to that suspension of disbelief. Where if you're doing time travel, for instance. Yeah, yeah. So Back to the Future, they call it the flux capacitor. Yeah. And that's the last of the explanation. Yeah. <laughs> you don't need to hear any more about it. Yeah. It just works. Works. That's it. The flux. They even say it. Um, the flux capacitor is what makes time travel possible. 
The end. Yeah, now, yeah, that's d- it. don't have to explain yeah, anymore. Yeah. It's too messy to of explain. Course, yeah. It's time travel. Yeah. Um, uh, so, you that, that has to have this technical speak that um, is easily dropped and believed. Yes. All right. So, that's yeah. sci fi. But for gangster stuff, you need to make it believable in street. Mm. And that's the, that's what I re- that's why I like writing yeah. gangster stuff. is Because, okay. like, I had this one character. Sh- um, he was spinning around a gun, showing mm. off to these uh, strippers, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, spinning around a gun, showing off to strippers. And go, you know, like blowing the gun, yeah. and, and it was loaded. Yeah. All right. And eventually, he went to go holster, it and he shot himself in the leg. Oh no! Like, ah! Yeah. And then this guy comes up, and he goes, "Well, that's what you get for putting on your peacock parade." Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And I'm like, I love that. It's just that one saying. Like, yeah. no one's ever said that before. Yeah. But everyone knows what it means. Exactly. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. That's for carrying on with your peacock parade, yeah, right? Yeah. So he's basically called him a cock. Yeah. And that is like showing off. Showing off. That's it. And now you've got a hole in your leg. Leg. <laughs> I think the next line was, uh, he goes, why are you always picking on me? He goes, well, I'm not the dumb cunt with a, le- a hole in my leg, am I? But, <laughs> so, I love writing that stuff. Wow. So, so yeah, I, I'm a bit of a mixture these days. So, mm. blinking cursor, just, you know, vomit out some ideas. Yeah. And then eventually just mapping it out on cards. Mm. And then populating that yeah, space right. with dialogue. In, uh, in software that's for writing scripts. Yes. So I use Scrivener. That's the. Yes. Yeah, I'm a yeah. Scrivener user. Yeah. Great. Yeah, I think I got that recently as well. Because I'm like. 50 cause, bucks, mate. Can't go Yeah, because Elizabeth, my sister, has her process and she does all the outlining. She's very detailed with mm. the outlining. And then she goes and does the, the mapping. Yeah. And then she'll just do the blinking cursor. Yeah. And then just go back and forth. And yeah. So. Yeah, and then scrutinize it. Um, yeah. The hardest thing for my scripts is handing it over to someone to read. <gasps> Because uh, now it's going to be scrutinized. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it's hard to take the scrutiny. I know. It's, it's very hard. What? It's your baby. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's that's my process uh, into writing. Um, and now that there's chat DTP, I think <laughs> there's a change. Yeah. I don't know. It'll, it'll be much more faster to get it out. Well, I did an experiment. Mm. So uh, one of the first scripts I wrote was called Pushing the Envelope, right? Yeah. Another gangster film. Mm. And a uh, 15-minute film, 20-minute film. Uh, go and check it out. It's on my channel. Uh, and I thought, what if I could get ChatGTP to rewrite the script without giving it all of the information? Okay. So I just gave it all of the snippets of everything that's in that script, mm-hmm. and it pretty much did it. Oh my god! Well, I didn't use my, it didn't have the Australianisms in it, yeah, the, those yeah. slangs. Mm-hmm. Didn't have that, yeah. but it had the structure. Oh shit! So I gave it the character names. I gave it. Um, the scenes that it was in. So mm. I wrote, wrote a really big blurb. Yeah. And to go, let's see how this thing performs. Yeah. Because um, uh, I was getting ChatGTP to um, do other copy. Yeah, um, yeah. I don't know. I can't remember if we were talking on air or off air about that. Uh, but um, yeah, my writers are getting annoyed. <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't replace worry. us. <laughs> my writer's getting annoyed. She's like, what? Don't talk about that thing. <laughs> it's cardinal sin. I'm like, oh, but everyone's using it. Well, now everyone knows what drummers feel like. Yeah. Right? When drum machines came out, like the drummer's like, oh, that's the end of the drummer. No, you yeah. still need drummers, drummers man. Yep. Still need drummers. Yeah. Still need yeah. riders. Yeah. Like, you're, ne- you're not going to, it's still a machine. Mm. It may be conscious. It may be a living being in some way yeah. in the future. Yeah. But currently, still a machine. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I found that it did a really good job. Mm. Um, but again, you still got to edit it. You still got to take it away oh, and yeah. edit it. And mm. st- but it gives you structures that you may not have thought of before. Mm. It's really good at taglines. Yes. Fine. Really good at tag. So good. So good at taglines yeah. if you're doing a little blurb. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, one one like tagline I used a long time ago was changing the world one edit at a time. Yeah, yeah. That's when I was like a dreamy editor. Back, yeah. You know, seven mm. years ago when I thought it was really awesome until I got into the market. Um, <laughs> and I was going to change the world one edit at a time. Um, uh, but then I had still searching productions, you mm. know, looking for the perfect still, yeah. right, which is the perfect moment. Mm. You know, and these are well thought out ideas. Yeah. Um, and when I look at the chat GTP, it comes up with similar content for, for posts. And it's like, wow, it took me ages to come up with that concept. No one, yeah. And it just, whoop. that was three weeks of thinking about it. Yeah. And it did it. Like that. Like that, yeah. It's scary. So we just got to leverage it, really. <laughs> totally got to leverage it. Don't mm, be scared of it. Don't mm. be scared. Be cautious, but don't be scared. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 But uh, so, yeah, I guess uh, my new writing, uh, it depends on what I'm writing. Uh, mm. Maybe chat GTV will be <laughs> after some of it. Uh, but ultimately, the ideas, um, I think, are the, are the ones where you're sitting in the shower. Mm. Or not sitting in the shower, standing in the shower. Um, some people have a seat, I suppose. Um, <laughs> <but> <laughs> in the shower. <laughs> yeah, just sitting in the shower. 
Mm. <laughs> sitting in the shower. <laughs> Thinking away. Never seen that on screen, so that'll be interesting. That'd be interesting. Yeah, yeah. Fix that. <laughs> um, but um, standing in the shower and then coming up with ideas. And I think it's so... And then meditative spaces because I've been meditating a lot more. Oh, how are you finding that? Really good. Oh, good. Okay. Really, really good. Because, um, uh, you know, my brain gets quite busy at times. Mm. Um. I find meditation to be like, uh, it's like jogging. Mm. It's very much like jogging. You don't want to do it. Yeah. <laughs> it's time consuming. Yeah. It's a little bit boring. Mm. Uh, but once you finish it. You feel good. You feel good. Yeah. Uh, after you finish a run, you're like, oh, thank God I did that run. Yeah. You, always, you, you never finish a run going, well, that was shit. That is true. Every single time when you train, after you feel good. Yeah. <laughs> just the beginning part. It's just the starting yeah. and doing it. And yeah. sometimes the, 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 the pursuit of keep doing it, like you can just stop running any time. Yeah. Like, oh, I can walk the rest of the way home. Yeah. Or run yeah. the rest of the way home. Uh, it's the same with meditation. Once mm. you get into that space, it's a little bit of effort, mm. a little bit of concentration. But um, once you're there, it's okay. Mm. And once you're out, you're like, oh, thank goodness yeah. I did that. Mm. That was really, really good. So, yeah, I find it meditative. That's great. Yeah. Mm. Um, uh, so that's been helpful. Uh, definitely, uh, especially with the workload, the volume, volume of work um, and self-care, I've, I'm starting to really acknowledge again. I've acknowledged it before, mm. but sometimes you get so far in the momentum yeah. that um, like I'll, I'll finish my day job mm. and then I'm, on my, I'm always commuting to my next job. Wow. Like yeah. I'm constantly commuting to a next mm. job or I'm on a next job. Mm. So um, whether I've left work to then go do a shoot, to then go home to do an edit, to go to sleep, to wake up, to then go do a shoot, <laughs> to then go do an edit, to then go to a film festival. Yeah. Then go, okay, now I've got to go to a uh, workers' group meeting. Mm. Okay, so it's Sunday afternoon. Okay, so I've got to do my accounting. Yeah. Uh, do all my invoicing. Now uh, it's Monday. I've got to start it all over again. Yeah. So it's seven days a week, 10-hour days. Where do you rest? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think you brought up before about having a rest. Um, you've got to put rest in there. You do. Mm, yeah. Otherwise, like, you just... Because otherwise, it will just come to a point where you sometimes will break and then you just wouldn't realize it. I've got um, some colleagues where they just said one day they woke up and they half their... They just lose, like, motion in half their body mm. because of all the strain of stress. Yeah. They just didn't know it was coming. Yeah, the body just said, no more. Yeah. No, yeah. Not doing it. Yeah. Uh, if you were going to push me, I'm just going to shut down. Yeah. I'll just yeah. shut down. And, what are you going to do with that? <laughs> <laughs> There's no way around it. Then Sounds like your body speaks to you too. It does. Oh, well, it's funny that, it's that you say speaks to me. Yeah. Uh, it does. Okay. Yeah, not in uh, words. <laughs> hey, it, Ross. Yeah, yeah. You're good looking today. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Um, uh, lo- <laughs> the biceps talking to you. <laughs> Feed me. We're hungry, bro. Uh, <laughs> not like that, but like mm. when I when I write, um, mm. I can feel like when I'm in the zone. Yeah, you know, when you get in the flow. Yeah. When I'm in the flow, I feel it in my hands. Mm. Uh, when I'm editing, when I edit and I get into flow, I'm yeah. not even not even thinking, just language coming out of my hands. Wow. I suppose um, uh, uh, things that have tripped me off to that are people like um, uh, like deaf people, for instance, right? Because mm. um, I talk in my sleep. Mm. I sometimes wake up talking to my wife in my sleep. Like, oh, yeah. She she talks in her sleep as well. So we're like, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, I wonder what we were talking about. <laughs> um, but we've got, we've got it sleep app now that records that. And we're like, that's really spinning, whatever's going on there. Uh, but I read somewhere that um, people that are deaf, when they talk in their sleep, yeah, they sign, right? Yeah, right. So they literally feel language in their hands, even when they're sleeping. Wow. And what I realized through editing, it's actually a language. Mm, Speaking mm, a language mm. of hot keys and mouse strokes and, and clicks, right? So yeah. now for a long time, it becomes um, auto- automatic. Yeah. I'm not even thinking about how to paste attributes. So I guess no... That's the hand position for it. Mm. Like it's command, you know, uh, command V, um, uh, shift command V. Yeah. Paste attributes, click mouse. You know, wow. don't have to. Th- I don't have to go in my head. No. Shift command V. I, yeah. I just do it, and now all of a sudden it's now a language. Mm. I feel that language in my hands, uh, and I felt that sensation while writing and when I'm in the zone. Yeah. I just feel the words in there, not in a. Yeah, I feel the words leaving my hands. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a syn- synesthetic. It's an anesthetic yeah. experience. Mm. Um, uh, same with uh, yeah, same with other sort of uh, writing experiences. Like when you're in a rehearsal studio, mm. um, you feel the, it, like to get f- 
four to five people in a room to do mm. music. Mm. It's about dis- establishing trust, mm. and that trust is through language, and that's the language of music. Mm. Like some, like I, I've auditioned with probably maybe 150 guitarists in my life. Wow! And I've only started bands with five. Yeah, right. right. Mm. Um, most guitarists that I've put into a jam room with a drummer and a uh, um, a guitarist, like composers, are a great example of this. Mm. Um, some composers I know are fantastic mm. at writing content for a movie. Yeah, perfect for it. Mm. Put them in a room with other musicians, they just fall apart. Wow. Yeah, you know, can't jam with other people. They have their, they have a very insular language with themselves. Yeah. Mm. So to be confident in a band, you actually have to be quite vulnerable and wow. willing to fail. And succeed. Win, mm. Fail, win, succeed. Fail, mm. win, succeed. And then win, 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 fail, win, succeed. And on the new ones, right? You feel like that's kind of parallel to filmmaking as totally, well? Totally. Eh? Totally. Mm. They're mm. very much they're, they're very much linked. Mm. I, I can give you an example of that. Like um, if you listen to a song from your childhood, mm. you'll have a visual experience. Mm-hmm. It will take you back. And you're like, oh, I remember that time, and yeah. you know, it might be as simple as you know, um, uh, your your mother in the kitchen while you got home from school, mm. and you had a song in your head that just gave you that memory, mm. and it's there forever. Yeah, there's a there's an audio link to that visual memory. Mm. So there's an audio sensations are very much visual, and the irony is that visual editing is very rhythmic. Interesting. Like you, when you cut fight scenes, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a rhythm to it. I guess I was never aware of it. Like I it just, is. It just it just feels right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Why does it feel right? Yeah, and that's yeah. that that feeling you're talking about. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Mm. That's that feeling where it is in your body. Yeah. It, it, you know, um, uh, like when you do fight choreography, mm, mm. it it, feel, it would feel right. Feel with, right, yeah. But when it's wrong. Yeah, you, it feels wrong. Yes, that's right. So your body's speaking to you. Yeah, and that's what I'm talking about. Body language in the in the body speaking to you. Mm. Um, when you're in flow, yeah, it really speaks well. Yeah. It's not umming and ahhing. It's just speaking mm. and doing. Now you find that with um, with like filmmaking and music. But what about people? Do you ever get that with people, people. too? Because I get that with people where they're yeah. oh they're flowing on. They're really not a flow. Like, like, but at the same time, you're like, oh, I don't want to be judgmental, but what for some reason? Uh, like the that. assessment, right? Yeah, the assess- yeah. I think you're talking about the assessment there, the person assessment. Um, yeah, you, we run into them. Yeah. Um, there's like, um, look, let me put it this way. I was talking to a guy that works in banking mm. and he was talking about hires. We're talking, because I'm a manager in different places and yeah. do hires and fires. And yeah. We're talking about the, the low of firing people because that sucks and you have mm. to fire someone. Even if they're really shit, it mm. still sucks. Mm. Um, and hiring people, how risky it is because you, you've got 15 minutes to figure mm. them out. Mm. Um, and I'd say, what about you? You know, you go, I'd never hire anyone that's a HD, high distinction person from university. Mm. Never hire them. Right. Okay. Interesting. You'd think that yeah. in banking, yeah. you'd want the most proficient, mm. um, uh, calculative person. Yeah. And that would be a HD person. Mm. That someone got 99% yeah. on accounting. But don't you want them? Mm. They go, no, they're, not really, they're really hard to work with. Really hard to work with. What I want is your above average achiever. Oh. I want someone who's a 75 percentile because then they're adaptable. I can, you know, the, the, you know, I don't need them to be able to calculate it in their head. I just uh, need them to be able to do the math. Yeah. Right. I just need to be, they just need to be able to do the math, right? They don't need to be so proficient yeah. at it. They just need to be able to do it. Yeah. At a, at a, at a, at a genuine level. And that, mm. You don't require a 99 percentile person to do that Interesting. but what you but when you find those 99 percentile persons they usually have personality problems yeah he goes well i need them to assimilate into the company so i need them to be a little bit sociable a little bit self-reflective mm. and you're not going to get that out of a 99 percentile person you're going to get that out of a 75 yeah, percentile person that's right so yeah over you know don't over specialize <laughs> yeah uh, so the character assessment though Sometimes you get those people that show up on your set, especially volunteers, mm. ones that show up super early, yeah, leave super late, yeah, and they're super keen. They go, "I'll just make the coffee for everyone. I'm just yeah. really happy to yeah. be here." And you're like, "You're super annoying, though. <laughs> Gosh, you're annoying. Um, I don't think this is going to work. I know you're super keen, but you're going to be. It's going to take us six films to train you. I just need someone who can do this today, mm. who's mm. not going to pester and annoy the cast." <laughs> Like, you know, the ones that go, I need to get, can I get a selfie with the main actor? Oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. cut it out, man. We're working. Yeah. Stop it. <clears throat> you know, uh, like when we, you know, and you know what it's like as well when you're working with um, big celebrities. <clears throat> um, when you're on set, you know, you know, like, I think 
there's some people I've really wanted to talk to. Like I, I, once I got to hang out with Hugo Weaving. Yeah. And you're like, no, I don't talk about the Matrix or the yeah, yeah, yeah. Lord no, of the no. Rings. Don't yeah. do that because do he's had that conversation yeah. 50 million times. times. Don't be that guy. Yeah. Um, talk about the weather. Yeah. Let's start there. Let's talk about normal things. The day that we're having on the set that we're working on, right? Yeah. Uh, like the one that really was hard was um, a guy called uh, Steve Bisley. Mm. Steve Bisley is the uh, a co-actor in Mad Max. Oh, okay. So um, I was there having several cigarette breaks with this guy. Yeah, yeah. And all I could say in my head is, don't talk about Mad Max. <laughs> Whatever you do, don't even say Max. <laughs> like, even if it's not in context. <laughs> like if you go, we've got to play this to the max. Don't even say that. We're going to do our best is how you're going to phrase that. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you had to really edit yourself. Edit yourself, right? <laughs> and those that yeah, and those character assessments, those that can't edit themselves, mm. you go, ah, oh, bit of a loose cannon. Can yeah. I try? And, that, and, it's a, and that again, it comes down to that communication and rhythm of trust. Yeah. And that communication is rhythmic. That's true. And if you have rhythm, and then people will say, they even use, we even use words like that. Like, I really resonate with that person. Mm. It's a vibration thing. Yeah. It's based on music, mm. and music is image. And image is music. Mm. Um, like I always tell editors, right? When I when I train an editor, um, is we don't edit eye to ear, we edit mm, ear to eye. eye. Yeah. All right, any music video will teach you that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's vid- It's uh, the baseline is music. Mm. Pick your music before you do your edit. Yeah. Because then the edit will come out better. Yeah, I wish I did that earlier. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> Most the opposite, people, you know. Because you look at it first, you think the image is the king. Yeah. It's, a, the, it's, actually, it's actually the sound. Actually, yeah, yeah. The sound is more uh, emotive than anything. Yeah. It's more graphical because it puts it in your head. Mm. Way more. Um, so people that resonate, mm. they they get in your head. Yeah. They can't. You can't get out. Of, they can't get out of your head. So That's they true. resonate with you. They're rhythmic people. Yeah. They have the right vibration. I like that. Yeah. Resonating people. I mean, that's my take home. Yeah. Well, the other ones that don't resonate well. Yeah. Um, they're not. They're not. Um, like for instance, like bees, right? Even bees play at a. I think. It's, uh, I think um, when they flap their wings as a hive. Yeah. It puts out the tone of C. So, C. Mm, yes. Yeah. It's a C. It's a C note. Yeah. Yeah. And they say that C notes are really helpful for your healing. So they've been, they've been, there's experiments now though. they're putting people around bees that are buzzing yeah. and changes their mood. <laughs> Let them until they sting you. <laughs> until they sting ah! you. Uh, no, but beekeepers have yeah. the highest, um, they have the lowest suicide rate. They have the highest life expectancy out of any profession. Wow. You go, why is that? It's because they're around this tone all the time. This tone is C. The, su- the tone of C is helpful for, the, is good for their brain health. Did not know that. Well, if you even if you go even further, man, like uh, about resonance, right? If you put a whole bunch of sand on a metal plate mm. and play different tones, mm. the shape will change. Yes, right? that's right. So th- 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 these are laws of the universe. So They're nice. fundamental laws. Yeah. I heard they did that experiment um, in Japan where they... Um, oh, with know, the water? Water, as yep. well as the, the rice jars and mm-hmm. setting intentions. And apparently the whole thing is that, you know, your thoughts can shape. Influence it. Yeah. Because that's why you're resonating. Yeah. So that's sort of quite interesting that there's a lot of, you know, data and science around that now. Hey? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, the water ones were uh, really interesting to me because mm. um, there was this guy who was um, uh, meditating with the water. Mm. And or playing music for the water as he snap froze it, all right. So mm. playing heavy metal music as he snap froze it, yeah. Or playing Mozart as he yeah. snap froze it. Yeah. It got all these different geometric shapes. Wow. Um. So you would argue that the mathematics behind that mm. would have different effects on different people at different times. Um. I mean, it can even go to the conspiracy theorist into this, and <laughs> people have, and I'm not. I don't want to go too much into it, but they say that um, there's called Harper, where they say that there's this um antenna in. Uh, Quebec in, yeah. in Canada yeah. that can send signals all around the world and they've got the chemtrails that release the um, ionizing, oh, yeah, right. uh, yeah. resonating material in the clouds mm. and then they use this machine to control our minds. Yeah. I think that's a bit too <laughs> far. That's uh, quite imaginative. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It sounds like a good movie. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fictitious movie. Mm-mm. But uh, yeah, like... People can go very far with that, but there is research to show that mm. um, we are based on vibration. And you yeah. can even go down to the astrophysics of it, man. Mm. When you look at... Okay, so you've got the standard laws of motion from Newton, right? Yeah. We can predict where the moon is going to be tomorrow yes. and the next day and mm. for the next 5,000 years, million years, we can mm. predict that mm. just by the laws of motion. So um, when you get down to the quantum level, yeah, those rules change. We can't predict where things will be. It's called superposition right. and it's called a supersymmetry, right? Um, and this is what quantum computing is, right? Mm. So computing is based off Newton laws, right? So on, off. Yeah. 
one, zero. Mm. Right? It's on off. Mm. And and if you put enough ones and zeros together, you can create a language that will do calculus for you. Right? Yeah. Right? And calculus that Newton invented. Yes. Right? Well, it's just another side note. Newton did calculus with a feather for nine months and wrote calculus. If you go and study calculus at university, it will take you four years to get that degree. Oh, my God. <laughs> right? That's how brilliant that person, that person was. Right? was yeah. Just amazing person, right? So you, we can now get computers to do calculus for us off that one zero, yeah. one zero, one zero. Mm. Right? Quantum computing, and that's based on on off. So quantum computing is based on one up, one down, one left, one right, one mm. in, one out. Mm. Right? Yeah. So that's called superposition. So an electron is not predicted until you look at it. Yeah. So if you're not looking at it, it's it could not be, there. It could be any position. Yeah. Yeah. Until you look at look it. Look at it. Yeah. And now you know where it is, right? It's like not if the chair is there when you see it or something. Yeah. 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 And that's that. That's what quantum computing is. So instead of having on off, it's got up, down, left, right, in, wow. out, and back. Right. So it's this three dimensional space. Yeah. Three dimensional space of computing. Um, I'm tripping out now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but when yeah. you get down to that level, they yeah. find that it's no longer a particle. Yeah. It's a wave. Waves, it's, yeah. So waves are particles and particles are waves. Mm. The whole universe is based on vibration. The whole thing. Yeah. Even down to the molecular and uh, atomic level, it's based on waves. Because yeah, I think I heard resonance. about the whole waves things through Tesla, Ni- Ni- uh, Nikola Tesla, yeah, yeah. and how he would say about, you know, Everything in this life is vibration. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's even more. Yeah. You, know, you can get conspiracy on that as well. You, mm. you, uh, they say that Tesla had a way of transmitting electricity uh, without power lines mm. and free power for everyone. Mm. And the power, com- power companies like, well, we can't yeah, make money, money off that. So they, yeah. <laughs> We're gonna do that. Yeah. Um, that's not profitable. Mm. Um, but yeah, they, these ideas have been around for a long time. Like even even the pyramids, man. Yeah. There's a lot of hypothesis around that the pyramids were built out of vibrations, man. How yeah. did they cut those stones? those stones? Well, the stones that are in the pyramids are near the, the hardness of diamonds. Yeah. So they're they're granite, right? Uh. The only thing harder than that's a diamond. So you can't we can't we can't replicate it. We can't carve that stuff up now. Even with technology, nope. oh my gosh, not yeah. with the same symmetry and not yeah. with the same precision. Wow! Like, um, oh, a, a big Rogan fan, obviously, but um, if you look at um, even the pots that they made, mm. that's not pottery. No, it's carved out of granite, and it's made um uh, less than an inch thick. It's non-symmetrical, so it's not made on a lathe. It's oh, not like they spun it out. Oh, yeah, it, they don't know. They don't know. Wow! And they've got drill marks that have gone through it, and they don't know how they drilled it because they didn't have machine machining. So they don't. They don't know. No, know. They don't know how they've done it. Um, they've e- even um, ages after them have replicated through pottery, where they've even painted on dots of granite. Right. So yeah. they faked making it. Mm, mm. So they, when they were making those pottery, uh, when, when ancients were making that pottery, they didn't know how the their pre- predecessors made these pots. They didn't know how they made these statues. Wow. Like they're made out of granite diorite. Yeah. If you if you ever picked up granite diorite, it's heavy. Yeah. And it's super dense. Yeah. Like, um, if you put a chisel to it, you'll break the chisel. Oh like it's harder than yeah. steel. Yeah. So you it's literally just... harder than steel. So you can't use steel to cut it. <laughs> so, See, there's so many mysteries of the world. <laughs> yeah, but they say, they say it's about resonance, mm. how these things are cut. Because they, they've got these scoop marks that go into granite as if it was sand yeah. and scooped out. Mm. So they reckon it's a molecular, um, a vibrating deal. Oh. That's what they think it is, yeah. So how do we take this out into the context of what we do? Ah, interesting. Totally. Um, (laughs) I think, um, uh, especially when resonating with people, Mm. and and I think I was tapping onto it before, it was about getting the best out of someone. Mm. For me, that's a a, a resonating experience because we're on the right Mm. vibration. Yeah. We're, 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 we're resonating and, and that resonation gives us a sense of community. Mm. That resonation gives us a sense of belonging. Mm. That resonation uh, gives us a sense of achievement and, 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 and love. Yeah. And I think ultimately, uh, love, love is the ultimate basement. Yeah. Without love, there's nothing. Mm. It took me a long time to figure that out. Um, like if, if you were angry, yeah, it's uh, going to pass in 20 minutes. Mm. In 20 minutes, I'm not going to be angry anymore. It's very fleeting. Yeah. Hate is quite fleeting. Right. Hate, hate, may, hate might even last a lifetime. But really? when someone passes away, that yeah. hate is gone. Ah. But we love people that have died. Yeah. Love will transcend death. That's how ah. powerful it is. Like, without love, none of it works. Mm. Like, they say money makes the world go round. It's just no. a lie. It's a total mm. lie. Um, it's, it, it's cooperation that makes the world go round. Mm. And cooperation has the seed of love behind it. You know, uh, um, uh, parents love each other to raise their kids. They mm. love their kids. That's why we're here. Yeah, yeah. 
You know, they love their grandparents that have passed on. Mm. And their grandparents love their grandparents that have mm. passed on. That love has transcended death. Death. You know, when you when you break down all of all of those emotions from mm-hmm. jealousy, um, you know, envy, um, you know, and and some of these they're not just necessarily negative emotions; mm. they're part of our human construct. Yeah. But when you erode them all down, bring mm. it right down to the base, and what is the fundamental of our emotional base? Mm. And I believe it's love. Love, yeah. And uh, the Beatles believe it's love, yeah, because <laughs> that's all you need. Wow, this is so deep, Ross. Like, <laughs> I think I'm, my brain just went, Boop! like, literally, like a mushroom. Like, it just, like, yeah, it hit something. Like, yeah, you're right. Yeah. So if you love what you do, yeah. Like, because I've always said this about, um, you know, there's three kinds of people. Mm. It's people that are good at what they do. Mm. It's people that are bad at what they do. <laughs> It's people that love what they do. Yeah. Because someone is good at what they do. Like, we've all had a job that we hate. Yeah. But we're good at it. Yeah. All right? It doesn't mm. mean we like it. We're just mm. good at it. But if you love what you do, like, you notice the difference between a, a restaurant that you go to that they're good at what they do mm. or they love what they do. Because mm. when you have a meal, because, like, um, you know, cooking's an art, right? Mm. It's a science and an art. Mm. When you go to a restaurant and that you have a meal that you're like, oh, my God, that was amazing. Yeah. It was made with love. Oh. Someone loved making that for you. They yeah. got they uh, they enjoyed doing it. Yeah. If they're good at it, yeah. yeah the snitty was okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, but the love gives it an extra level of something. Yeah, you get yeah. a bad snitzel from a pub. You're like, they really hate their <laughs> life. <laughs> this is awful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Is, they don't want to be here. Mm, mm. Um, they don't want to be doing this. They're not doing any research on how to make this better. <laughs> and I got that. It cost me thirty dollars for this bad experience. Um, this is terrible. Um, but uh, yeah, there's three kinds of people. Mm. Uh, you got to love what you do, and just because you love what you do doesn't mean you're always going to be happy. Mm. You know, you're not always going to be happy with that. Uh, there's going to be sad moments. Yeah. Uh, it's not all gravy, man. Mm. It's not all gravy. Uh, and and, and limelight. You know what it's like. Yeah. People are like, oh, I just wish I was in that position. I'd be great. We're like, could you understand the work like, that is behind yeah, that? Yeah. I haven't slept in a year, exactly. man. <laughs> That's right. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Totally. And you want to walk down the red carpet and get your photo? Yeah. That's that's not even a percent. That's not even, yeah. That's right. You know, mm. it's not even a percent of the work, man. Mm. Um, there's so much work that went behind it. And then you realize, oh, just... I don't even want to be on this red carpet. I'm tired. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got to be here because I've got to represent. Okay, I've got this. Yes. Right, yeah. Game on. Mm. You really have to always, always, m- you know, uh, 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 muscle it up, you know. Mm. Um, so, yeah, uh, resonance and love is very important. Mm. Um, if you And your crew, like yeah. how, Phoenix Eye, man. Still, yeah, they're still ama- around. Amazing yeah. crew. Yeah. Based on love. Yeah. And now they're doing their own thing as well, which is great. Yeah. I come back and uh, Therese is now like writing her own feature. You know, mm. I'm like, oh, this is amazing. Like, mm. I don't always have to be here, but I know there's a ripple effect. Mm-hmm. And then now realizing, oh, wow, I love to... Again, ripple is very resonant yeah. term. And then when you meet other people who ripple, mm. you get even more inspired to keep going. So whenever I talk to you, I'm it harmonizes like... harmonizes I'm like, yeah, that's... We're on the same page. I'm going to still go off and do my thing because I've met someone who's also doing... I'm not so alone. Yeah. That's the feeling, right? It's a good feeling. It's a good feeling. And you feel like... I feel like, you know, there's a reason why we are here and this is what we are pushing for, which Mm. is the community. Mm. You know, as much as people go, oh, community, why? You know, there's no no power in that. I'm like, what? Are you serious? Mm, There's a lot of power in that. Come on. There is so much... There's so much love. And Mm. the love of seeing people being able to see people on the same level playing field, not mm. like, oh, up here, down here, more or less, mm. rich, poor. There's mm. no divide with that. Love cuts all that stuff it, away. It erodes it all away. Yeah. It is the basement of all of it. Yeah. It is the, it is the common denominator. Mm. Mm. Um, all decisions we make are based yeah. out of fear and love. Yes. Like, um, if you're doing a job that you hate, that was a decision made out of fear. Fear. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Because I have to pay for this. I need to pay for my rent and there's no other way around it. Yeah. I, and if I don't do, if I don't take this job, I might be homeless. Mm. That's a decision. It might be. A, it might be a direct reality. Yeah. It's still a decision made still out of fear. Still a decision. Here. Yeah. Still a decision yeah. made out of fear. Um, the decisions that are made out of love, they don't pay off. Like, like, like mm. I say, that anger is that quick, fleeting thing. It's mm. highly volatile. Yeah. It's very emotional, and yeah. people can get really caught up, and it can even cause violence. Right. It's really volatile. Yeah. But love, mm. it's a slow burn. It is a slow burn. But it lasts forever. Yeah. It lasts forever if you do it right. Mm. If you do it authentically and genuinely. Mm. If you want to see people win, That's not right. just yourself. Yeah. Because if you think about it, what I realize is even if you do win, mm. but if you're there up there by yourself, you know how bloody lonely. Yeah. You know, but then if you're up there and you can pull people up, it's like a party. Yeah. You know, we're sharing. We, you know, oh, what are you doing? And then, you know, there's, there's always this constant, like, like turnout of like 
you know, the energy keeps flowing. Yeah, it, it, it gets momentum. I know. It gets, um, and, and, and it's like a washing machine going out of control, right? Mm. It's just spinning faster and faster mm. and faster. And then it turns into a new thing. Mm. And then that new thing needs to be um, tended love. And then that will gain momentum. Yeah. And there's yeah. a flow on effect of those things. Mm. Um, any positive experience that I've ever had on anyone, they always talk about in this context. Yeah. They always talk about in this context mm. where um, they go, man, thanks for pulling me aside that time mm. and reminding me myself. Mm. You know, um, uh, I go, oh, I was just being honest, man. Mm. I was just being honest mm. with you. I wasn't, wasn't blowing wind up your ass, man. I was just telling mm. you that you, what you needed to know mm. so you didn't fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> now, can I ask, um, honesty. Mm. Now, I always find that such Interesting a one. big thing, <laughs> like, in what we do. Um, and sometimes people might say that, oh, we're too blunt or mm-hmm. we might be too blah. You yeah. know, like, we might shake up, rough up. Feathers yeah. from that, but what's your standpoint? Oh uh, yeah, honesty is an interesting one. Um, see, there's something, there's a difference between being um, uh, uh, caustic mm. and honest, right? Like, mm. for instance, um, I think a pregnant lady is a good way to describe this yeah. as, a, as, as, as a as a as a metaphor, right? Mm. Uh, if a pregnant lady come up to you and said, "Do I look fat?" Yeah. Well, clearly they're not the same that they were nine months ago. Yeah. They're like clearly bigger. Mm-hmm. But if you said to them, "Yeah, <laughs> you do." You're just being an asshole. Yes, that's right. <laughs> right? Mm. You're just being, you're not being blunt. Mm, um, mm. You're speaking. You're speaking something that's true. Yeah. But you're not being truthful. No. Because the real truth is, is that yeah, you may be in this condition, but you're actually quite glowing, and mm. and you look like you're about to take a new step in your life, and yeah. it must be exciting, mm. right? That's the truth. Yes. So that's the difference between truth and being caustic. Mm. So you can be quite caustic. You can point out attributes of someone that mm. that are true yeah. in a negative fashion and call mm. that truth. Yes. But truth really has more attributes to it than one, you know, than one identifiable thing. It's not black and white. It's not black and white. It's a package. That's right. Okay. Truth is a package. Mm, mm. There's more attributes to truth. And when you're critiquing people, mm. and I find the truth hard to deal with sometimes. Oh. Yeah, especially with my edits, man. Yeah. You yeah. talk to Jay and Misty about me complaining about their critiques, man. Wow. Like, they, they always, I, I have to be careful because then sometimes they're scared to come to me because I'll be like... I'll be like, that's bullshit. It's edited that way because that is the limit of the content that is on offer. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And what you're asking for is whimsical. Yeah, yeah. So I have arguments with them, right? Yeah. And they, they want to get in. No one wants confrontation and everyone wants it to be an easy approach. Mm-hmm. And my job is to get them to understand jargon and the limits of editing, mm. right? They don't understand the technical limits of it sometimes. And 50% of the time, they're right. Mm. I'm just being a complaining little bitch because I don't want to change it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that's another 15 minutes of my time. I don't want to do that. Um, <laughs> you know? And that's, that's me. That's a, a good impression of myself, by the way, if you're watching this. <laughs> um, but, <laughs> uh, but the truth is that um, things require critiquing. Mm. And sometimes that's going to have some uh, negative feedback involved in it. Mm. But, you know, and that... but. My advice to telling the truth mm. is finish on a good note. Yeah. I like... It's like this, the sandwich effect, you yeah. know? <laughs> this piece was really crap what you've just done here. Yeah. But... But <laughs> yeah. your approach is good. Yeah. What we need more is a bit more approach and more more research into this part here. Mm. And more a little bit more time over here. Mm. That's what we need. Um, yeah. Well, what's your, what's your take on truth? Well, I think, you know what, like it's interesting because it's quite relative, but I also noticed that because having whoever is in my inner circle, they help edit me. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I know exactly what you mean. Because there times where I'll, be, I'll say stuff and then... What she means to say. Yeah, exactly. Oh, you know, I know she comes across as blunt, but what she's trying to say is, and oh, thank you. Because for me, sometimes I'm like, oh, blah, you know? Because mm. that's how I saw it. But at the same time, I didn't, I couldn't, make the explanation waffle and it just needed to say something to someone because they've done it five times like five they kept on doing the same mistake time is crucial exactly and I like, know the feeling I like don't I don't know why it's not time efficient for me to explain it yeah people aren't doing this for me and blah 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 it's the world's fault I'm like no you've done it five times that 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 is you gotta have to take account that it is probably you. probably you yeah and they go oh, how would you say and they're like oh, you know what Elizabeth this is what I'm gonna say and then I'm gonna leave and she comes in and she's like Good cop. So always have to you need get a good your cop. team to gonna do that. Well, I I too am a bad cop. <laughs> I, <laughs> I am, uh, but Misty can be a bad cop as well. It depends mm. on what the context is. That's right. Uh, the context is in, important, but um, when it comes to directing, mm. um, especially with my team, I think they're harsher on me because they know me, uh-huh. oh, and that's the other mm. thing. There's a bit of a mm. bias in there, and I'm such a know-it-all <laughs> that 
um, I have to be taken on because mm. I'm such an old all right, mm. and I do know a lot, but I don't mm. know. Every- I have to, you know, I have to get- let my ego get out of the way. Yeah, I don't know everything. Yeah, I know a lot, but I don't know everything. Mm. And people have different perspectives, and I have to respect that. Mm. Sometimes that's hard. So, uh, but generally, uh, it- oh, the irony is they're the bad cop with me in our own con- in our own content. Mm. But when we are producing content, mm. generally I'm the good cop. Mm. I'm like, mm. uh, they go, we've got to critique this thing. I go, well. You don't say what you're planning to say. <laughs> you don't say that to an artist. Yeah. You're going to crush them if you yeah. say that. Yeah. You can't say it that way. You've got to say it this way. So I find myself to be a bit of a translator and hostage oh. negotiator in that space. <laughs> okay. Uh, but at the other times, uh, like, I, I, like I remember there's one, there was one instance actually, because mm. I've done a lot of TV, right? Yeah. Done a lot of shooting for TV. And, and I was, no, actually, no, this is one of my projects. Yeah. I was um, a DOP on a, a documentary. Mm. So I'm shooting this doco. I'm, uh, I'm, in, I'm in the desert shooting this doco. Mm. And I had two hosts that have never been a host before. Yeah. So I did some rehearsals with them at the start. You know how you had to do an opener, closer. Yeah. It's kind of like MC work, but That's right, you've got yeah. a mic in front of a camera, right? Yeah. So, and you're just presenting content going, here we are today. Yeah. We're at these people. And, and I'm here talking to Joe Blow. Joe Blow, what do you think of this, right? Yeah. You know, it's interview style. Yes. So, you know, relaxed news TV style. Mm. And I had, and because I, you know, I didn't have a lot of money at the time. I had very limited gear. I think I had like mm. f- four hours of record time on mm. my on my cards. Mm. And this host kept um, cutting herself. You know how when you know when an actor cuts themselves, you're like, don't cut. I oh, I you, cut. Yes, that's right. I cut. Yeah. I know. I will let you know when the cut is. Don't cut. Stop cutting yourself. Yeah, yeah. You know when you see or an actor or a performer, they'll go. Okay, so um, they got a, their line is the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog, for instance, yeah. right? So they go, the quick brown fox, ah, oh, stuffed it up again. You're like, stop doing that. Yeah, you can just still just, just rewind. bumble and, through it. Yeah. Just get to the end. Stop cutting yourself because yeah. you're chewing up my tape. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, because you, you know, because you're behind the camera. <laughs> I know how much resources we've got and you're chewing them up because you keep cutting yourself because now we need, to re- we, we need to re-clap it. Yeah. Which is going to, you know, I've got to reset the whole crew. Exactly. Um, if you just stopped yourself and we go, okay, no, just keep rolling, keep rolling. We go from the start and mark, action. Yeah. Or and cue, whatever yeah. it is, right? Yeah. Um, and they'd keep cutting themselves and cutting themselves oh. and cutting themselves and cutting themselves. I got up yeah. to like one of them was 17 takes. Wow. And I'm like, you've actually gotten this twice if you didn't cut yourself because I could just put in some overlay mm. and bank those two bad boys mm-hmm. together. Mm-hmm. End of story. That was... Ten takes ago. Yeah. I could feel my blood starting to boil. To boil, yeah, yeah. Because I'm trying to be professional. Yes, Try not to be right. emotional. Mm. And I uh, had, uh, it was that, uh, ironically, I had um, some, because it was a, a documentary about um, a movie. Mm. So a lot of actors and directors there. And this director's come over to me and goes, I can see what's going on. Let me, let me talk to her. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I can see you're about to blow up. Don't blow up. Mm. And he caught me. He yeah. saw what I was going through and he caught me. Yeah. That's the closest I've gotten to losing my shit on a set. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Because you know how it is. Like, sometimes you want to lose your shit. Like, for fuck's sake, people. Yeah. Get yeah. your shit together. We know, we've done this 20 million times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Strike the goddamn lights. Be careful. Stop <laughs> tripping over that fucking thing over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. all I've got to tell you. Yeah. Like, you want to you want to do that, mm, <laughs> but you can't do can't. that. Yeah. Well, some yeah. directors do. Yeah, um, for me, I can't because I'm like, oh, everyone's on here because of love, and because the of harmony. the love, you can't, you kind of, you kind of have to. Oh, there's a problem there, but then let's sort it out. Then you'll put negative juju into I your know, shoot, and then it becomes dead. Yeah. So I think for me with Echo Eight, everyone loved it because they had a good experience, mm. and as much as we didn't have the budget, and Takashi was cooking all the the, <laughs> the lunches and the dinners and stuff, and it felt like family. We were shooting something, we were still huddling yeah. around and talking, and and that was how. It was made by love. Mm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? That's it. You don't want to put that bad negative uh, vibration into your shoes. Yeah, yeah. Um, some people love to do that. Like, mm. I've met directors like that. Like, oh, when I went to work with you, because yeah. I, the, well, the reason, I had a cheeky reason why I wanted to do acting on, on sets, right? Yeah. Because I wanted to see how other directors work. Because mm. I talked to other actors and I'd be talking about these other directors, this mm. director here, and then they'll compliment me and they'll go, man, you're such an approachable director and mm. you give me a lot of license, but yeah. when you want something, you won't let it go. Mm-hmm. Um, you're prepared to work. You know, I think one of the shoots uh, we were doing like a 17-hour day. Yeah. I'm like, this is a 17-hour day, guys. I know it's a long time, mm-hmm. but if we don't split this up, uh, it's going to add $4,000 to the shoot. Mm. If we can do this in this one day, because I'll get the night shoot and the day shoot, and yeah. we do it all as one. I'll get you fed all day. Yeah. Lots of water. Yeah. Make sure you look after me this 17-hour day. And people come back at the end like, man, I can't believe we got that done. Mm. It was so easy. You made it so easy. 
Well, it wasn't easy for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, but I'm glad that your experience was good because that's what I was most worried about mm. was you walking away going, fuck that guy. Yeah. I'm yeah. not working with him again. Yeah. I didn't want that. I wanted them to have a good experience and I wanted the content. Mm. Um, and I'll rest on my own emotions with that. Um, so I've always gotten those compliments and I'm like, who are these other directors out there? <laughs> They're really horrible. Or not really horrible, I guess, but just different. Mm. And I went on your shoot. I'm like, she's very similar to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> she directs similar, the way that I direct. Yeah, yeah. There's no insight. Yeah. <laughs> the only insight I have is personally about being an actor, <laughs> yeah. but not as um, gleaning uh, um, uh, how to do a shoot. I'm like, mm. we operate very similar yeah. on, a, yeah. on a, as a director. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I was quite profound for me. I'm like, wow, we do it very similar. Mm. Um, checking in with the crew, yeah. make sure everyone's good. Mm. Not, not, not over mothering the situation. Yeah, but just checking in. Yeah, but you know, because you yeah. know the edits, you know the other fields, other sides of how to make stuff. That's why you know how to. I know where the know. problems will come later. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, if we don't. Do we need to shoot this again because we have the handle? Or is the cut? Did we cut too quickly there? Yeah. See, you know? so you also got the editing brain when you're you're filmmaking, mm. which I fi- I actually found it was quite surprising. That not every filmmaker has that. Like I, I would talk to filmmakers. That surprises oh, no. me too. Yeah, they're like, oh, no, no, I just direct. I'm like, do you edit? Like, no, no, I don't. I don't know that. There's someone else does it. I'm like, yeah, but like, what? you don't ever touch edit. Like, whoa. Or even watch the yeah. editor. Like, well, I'd like, want to be in the room with the editor if I, I wasn't was editing. So profound. Like, wow. So you, they just do not have an editing eye. Yeah, you have, but you have to, right? I can't get my head around that. I, but that's the thing. I How could you possibly visualize in, it and I, understand the chain? Yeah, but the, I think in Australia there was a time period where, we, especially in the different film schools, it's like you specialize and you—that's all you do. You specialize in one thing, no. and everyone else has their own. Impossible. Thing. You know, not in today's economy. <laughs> that's no impossible. Way. Yeah, I'm just a director. Mm. No way. Yeah. Uh, you have to be um, like it's like saying to a DOP, "Don't worry about lighting." Like, <laughs> yeah. What? what? Well, no, we've got a lighting guy for that. Yeah. Like, no, nah, no, nah, nah. nah, they're very closely linked. Exactly. Lighting and lighting and like, the whole thing's based on light, man. Mm. The, um, it's definitely linked. So yeah. they need to talk, or yeah. they need to have an understanding of each other's role. That's right. Um, and yeah. I see the same thing with a director and editor. Like directors and editors should be joined at the hip. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. and you should like if I'm not editing something. Mm. Um, I have to be in the room while it's edited. Mm. Uh, well, not the whole thing. Like, put the package together and I'll come around in the afternoon and then, I'll, you know, I'm not going to, you know, um, look over your shoulder yeah. while you're doing it. Um, but I've even done edits with people where there's two of us editing. I go, let's edit the same thing together mm. and see if we come up with the same thing. Oh, right? that's cool. Yeah, yeah, and just do... I like, I like to do things like that to yeah. see see what comes out of it. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, working with an editor or as an editor... Uh, and as an editor that works with directors, it's really easy because you know what they want. Yes. Super easy. Yeah. Um, but I, I do a lot of repair work. <laughs> yeah, because I'm thinking like, would you, like for you, um, because you edit and then sometimes you get footage, would you be like, well, who shot this and why did they get me stuff so I can make Misty sure will, it makes sense? <laughs> Misty will hear it from upstairs. Ah. Like um, the most shouting I ever do is on my own at yeah. my computer going, for fuck's sake, <laughs> why did you just not hold that shot? Yeah. Why did you move? Mm. Why don't you just hold the shot? What what stops you? Or I like, oh, is any of this in focus? It, just give me one shot in focus. Mm. Just one. Like I'll, I'll get frustrated very quickly in an edit suite on my own. Um, usually at a camera operator. Mm. Um, but um, very rarely at a at a cast member. Um, sometimes I'll be like, uh, the ones that look at the screen when they're not supposed to, they annoy me. <laughs> Stop looking at the camera. Oh, you've ru- like the scene's great, but yeah. he ruined it. Oh yeah, he's right. looking at the camera. I'm like, stop looking at the camera, man. <laughs> yeah. So that when you're a director as well, you'd be like, you're so looking sharp. You have to. You've got to be onto it. Yeah. These little nuances, right? Yeah. You've got to be onto that. Um. So yeah, you definitely have to have an eye for that. Mm. I find mm. it when I talk to directors that don't edit at all, I just find that as an enigma. Yeah. Like, what is that? I'm like, how do How's you that possible? like, like you studied directing and that's it and then after this that's all the jobs you get like well my guess how? is that they lean on their DOP that's a leaning mm. on your DOP because your DOP know, DOPs know how to edit yes they yeah. will edit yeah I've noticed like some of the like uh, some directors who are not that strong in that their field they will lean on their DOP who knows all the cuts I'm like oh wow you know how to edit like that's yeah they'll know well, well that's not going to go together yeah why well, you've asked me to shoot that's not going to go together and they go mm. oh, okay so how do you want to shoot it Yes. Ah, right. I <laughs> that's see. what I think. That's what I think's happening. Yeah. Because yeah. uh, that's the only way I get my head around that. Um, mm. Yeah. So they're leaning on their DOP. 
they might be doing like the composition stuff, all right? So I need mm. this vase and this part of the scene. Yeah, and, yeah. And the blocking is going to be this person walks through this door and this person stands yeah. up. Mm. Um, I imagine that they have all of that down pat. Mm. Uh, but um, the handles, mm. how are we getting? The, like I had, uh, it was really cool. I've got some uh, some young people that have been coming on the show lately. The next cohort of the uh, Maiden Western Knights, if you will. Oh, nice. Uh, and I had um, uh, Cerise and Laura on, mm. uh, and they directed a um, a zombie film. Oh. Student film that did really well at Maiden yeah. West. Uh, I think I even got the audience. Did he get the audience choice? No, Best Student Award. Mm. And um, really mad movie, mm. right? And they mm. co-directed it, one wrote, one edited, wow. right? So you had mm. one that was the editor, one that's mm. the writer, and they both directed mm. it. And um, uh, watching them go through their journey is intense, man. They are just a, uh, a bag of tricks between them. Like, way way further than us when we were their yeah. age, man. Wow. Like, when we were younger, like, we weren't onto it like they're onto it. Wow. So, that's the other sort of thing that I'm seeing now is the people that are coming up in the industry now, way more advanced. Oh, yeah. Way more willing to take risk and way more abreast of everything they need to do. Mm. So, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, those, I lost my little train of thought there. Where was I going with these guys? Uh, what were we just talking about? Talking about editors and directors. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So th- those the relationships, mm. I see that are, are, are more easy for them. Mm. There's less ego involved in it. Yeah. There's more less ego involved in it. Less specialization. Um, but yeah, um, watching those guys because then they complement each other. Mm. That's what's going on there. Mm. And that's what you should be as a collaboration. Yeah. You should be complementing each other, not yeah. not fighting against each other. Like I've been on D- I've been on shoots with DOPs that I just do not agree with at all. Like yeah. that's that's horseshit, man. Yeah. Shoot like I didn't say that. Yeah, yeah. I'm thinking, man, you gotta shoot that again. That's not right. Yeah. Um and then and then they would start arguing with you. Yeah. Um but I've been on the other end as well as the DOP arguing with a, a director. Yeah. And they're going, We need this and I go, It's a lot of work, man. Yeah. What yeah. you're asking for is not possible. Yeah. Um, and maybe, look, hey, maybe it's out of my, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe mm. it's out of my skill set. I don't know here, but when you, how are you going to edit that together? They, um, yeah, well, that's right. That's what I was going to say about um, uh, those guys. Yeah. They had taken everything into consideration, but they didn't consider how they were going to edit it together. <gasps> so transitions, oh, fades. Yeah. Um, no. So they just had jump cut after jump cut Ooh, after jump cut. So, so banged on, but then they, they yeah. tidied it up and you would have known. Yeah. But that's where all the work was. Oh, I see. So yeah. it added... Added a lot of time. Yeah. So when you go and edit something like that, you go, there's no handles and we need to have a plan. And Okay, so we're in a car. How do we get out of the car into the house? <laughs> yeah. This next, and then a lot of people I see that make this mistake, especially student films, yeah. a lot of walking. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like all that you don't need. It's all yeah. walking yeah. and conveyance. Like too yeah. much walking conveyance, man. Just yeah. get in the house. Just get in the house. Or just at that wide of... No, no, just get in. Yeah, or just have the car door open and then the next door opens and then there's your splice. Yeah, you've got to find those splice points, right? But only that's the thing that those directors that don't edit... No. How do you know that? Yeah. You couldn't know that unless you edited. Exactly. How's that that possible? You just try to get the coverage, Mm. but then you don't know when to cut from it. Even with action, action is pretty tough when, if you don't know how to do action. Super tight, yeah. It's like, they'll just shoot it coverage or they just have the jump cuts but it just wouldn't work like you mm. literally need to know the beats of the fights to sh- Again, cut into it it's a yeah. rhythmic deal man yeah you got to look at image rhythmically and you can only experience that if you've cut it yeah because it has a rhythmic feel and back to that feeling that's what i was talking about i feel mm. once it gets once i get the flow and its rhythm yeah i feel it yeah i feel it in my hands man and i and i always, uh, uh, sometimes it's distracting because if i focus on it then I lose the flow. Oh. It's sort of, it's kind of like touching butterfly wings, yeah, right? Yeah. It loses, they like, lose the ability to fly. fly. So you I go, to, I just yeah. have to accept it and not focus on it, stay in the flow, mm. but just acknowledge that it's there. Mm. If I start going, oh, this is nice feeling, I'm like, what was I doing again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I lost the flow. In the moment. It's like acting as well. Mm. You can't sort of be too intellectualizing it when you're in the character. Yeah. Otherwise, it comes off very, like, mechanical. Like, mm. you literally have to let yourself go and, and trust that once you're in the character, mm. that um, that all the rehearsals you've done before that, it's going to lead to that moment. Mm. And, and especially with camera, I'm always fascinated about, especially directing and finding those moments in people where you know that, they're in the character, but then also audiences are not not being told what's going to happen. Mm. Like they're actually feeling a moment. Mm-hmm. They're experiencing a moment with the character. I always love those types of spaces yeah. as well. So yeah, and finding yeah. new things. Mm. Yeah, finding new spaces and finding new spaces within yourself. Mm. Um, that that's the part about acting I really like is the exploration of it because mm. you explore all these characters. And yeah. when I ride, I find a 
there's a strong link and resonance between those two things when I write a character and act a character. Mm. So I've started um, in my own time acting a lot more characters that I write. So I'll do the monologues. Oh. I'll do my own monologues and um, I'm, t- turns out I like to be a bad guy. Oh, <laughs> right. Sort of bad guy monologues are my favourite. Oh, gosh, I've come up with some... <laughs> Some whoppers, man, that are just like, wow, that's bloody sinister, man. Wow. That is some evil shit <laughs> yeah. to say to someone before you shoot them. Um, yeah, so, yeah, I, I'd, I'd love to get out there and do it more. Mm. Um, but uh, I think I think we're close to the, the end of our podcast here, Mariah. Yeah, oh, my God. We've been here for uh, hours. <laughs> yeah, wow. It's uh, Yeah, we've been here for two it's hours. Crazy. It's been two hours, man. I feel like we went into a little time time warp. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Um, yeah, it's the flux capacitor. It's how time it. travel is possible. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, but where can uh, like because we got Echo Away. Mm. Um, where can we? Obviously, is that still playing at the moment, or are you going to uh, do no, more circuit? At the moment, we're still doing the circuit, and it's getting a screening uh, at the Nevada Women's Film Festival. Mm-hmm. Um, and now we're just looking at, we're working with a sales um, agent. It's funny because in Australia, it didn't get picked up, but mm. in the US and the UK, yeah. like there's been interest. Of so course. trying to navigate that space of distribution has mm. been a new thing mm. for me as well. But then also now looking at working on the next two that mm. we're hoping to film in one year and eight months. Okay. And also raise all the, the resources and finances. Everything that goes yeah. behind making a feature yeah. film. That's right. Um, and yeah. um, what about so Last King of the Cross is mm. still playing on Paramount? People can just jump onto Paramount Plus and binge watch episode one to ten. We now. can binge watch it now and not That's get frustrated right. on a Sunday mo- exactly. Saturday morning. Yeah, um, mm. I'm actually going to go back and watch it again. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I want to cool. go see the parts that I've missed, mm. uh, or if I missed anything, or you know, you know, when you go and watch something again, there's yeah. always those Easter eggs. Yes, a few little Easter eggs in there. Yeah. I'd like to go and see. That's cool. Um, but any other productions that are coming up? That's pretty much it. Be once I go back to. America. I've got a short film I'm doing, but I'm also doing a documentary. That's why I'm back here, back mm-hmm. and forth to Australia mm-hmm. um, with the Art Gallery of New South Wales, yep. um, Warriors, um, documenting women mm-hmm. in uh, martial arts Great. in Australia. Yeah. Great. Mm. Um, and uh, where can we go to check out Phoenix Eye just to check out their content? Because you guys oh, have done so much work. Oh, to be honest, there's a website, uh, phoenixeye.com.au. It's a bit outdated, yeah. but we're on socials. That's all right. You can always check my stuff, what I'm doing on my Facebook and Insta sort of thing so Maria- they can just fire up Maria Tran yeah Maria uh, MariaTran.co yeah, yeah there yeah, you go yeah all right. Oh, well, thank you so much for being on the show. It's always a pleasure, and, and good luck with your documentary and going back over the states. And um, give me a, give me a call when you come back. Will totally. and I'll, I'll be over there in uh, hopefully January. January. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so hopefully, great. hopefully the gods align, the you know, film gods align, so we can do a project together. That's it. That'd be great. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. All right. No yeah, worries. Cool. And you guys have been watching the Pager Train. You can go and check us out on uh, YouTube. And while you're there, don't forget to subscribe. And you can also go and check us out on Spotify. That's right. Video on Spotify. And you can, if you're an avid listener, you can go and check us out on I, um, iTunes or iHeartRadio. You guys have been watching The Pager Train, and we'll see you next time. Whew, battery's about to run out. Wow. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> we just kept on going. Like, I think that was really fun. That, that was, was really super fun. Because you gave me a couple of thoughts. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's what we're doing. <laughs>